Hey, what's up, guys? How are you doing? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever it is that you are. I hope you had a wonderful New Year celebration. I hope it was safe and fun, and I hope you had a good time. And welcome to another live unboxing video by me, Siri Emerald, right here on this channel. <clears throat> so, this figure that I have, I'm really excited about, because uh, I'm a huge Spider-Man fan. Huge Spider-Man fan. Huge, huge Spider-Man fan. You wouldn't believe that looking in uh, the toy collection here. You know, they're not toys. In the actual figure collection. Speaking of toys, let me get this clear right now. This is for teens and up. This is for 12 and under. Teen and up. Um, these are adult collectibles, even on the packages they say for ages 15 and up. And so if you're under 13, if you're not a teen, I hate to say this, but you got to go because of the COPPA rules, Child Online Privacy Protection Act. Um, I don't want anybody to think for one second that this is tailored to you. This is an adult collectible for ages 15 and up. Likewise, we're going to be talking about mature content here. I'm not trying to entertain any children on the channel. Love you guys. We all started off as a child at one point or another, but for your privacy and protection, please don't visit the channel until you're older. And I hate to say that. I hate saying that, but gosh darn it. That's the way it is. And that's truthfully the truth. So you got to go. You got to get the fuck out. That's all there is to that. Um, anyhow, um, in my life, of course, I was raised up with Superman and Batman. Everybody is, I think, to some degree. They're kind of like, uh, they're kind of like the stand-ins, or well, not the stand-ins. They're like the go-tos. They're like the your traditional superheroes, more or less. I mean, everybody knows Superman. I can't, I can't imagine anybody in Western civilization who isn't familiar with, to some degree, Superman, the Man of Steel. Same thing for the most part, with Batman. So, I think everybody has some type of a connection with Superman and or Batman. And so those were the comics that I started with when I was a little guy. And then, uh, you know, as I got older, I discovered more and more superheroes. And then somewhere in my teens, I discovered Spider-Man. And oh my goodness. I finally felt for the first time that I was actually reading about somebody that was like me. And I don't mean like me as in the ability to climb walls or whatever. I just mean like he was just a regular kid. Just a, I mean, he was smart. So I guess he wasn't too regular. But he was just a kid. You know what I mean? He wasn't like Superman who happens to be an alien from another planet and that's what gives him his power. Batman who happens to be insanely rich and he's a genius as well, um, which gives him his ability to be what's termed as a gadgeteer. Um, but Spider-Man is just a regular schmuck, just some kid, you know, trying to make it through high school in the first place, which is uh, a rough time. I'm sure all of you remember your high school. Not too many of you can truthfully sit back and say that you were the, the cock of the block in high school, that you were the queen of the whole high school. Some of you can, but most of you had at least one bad day, maybe many bad days of high school. And poor Peter Parker went through it all the time. So I could identify with him. And uh, so he became my go-to guy, even with his, his motto, his very famous motto, which he learned the hard way through the death of his Uncle Ben. Um, with great power comes great responsibility. So anyhow, all of Spider-Man is just huge to me. And this is the black cat, Felicia Hardy. And when I was growing up again, reading Spider-Man, there was really, for the most part, just one Spider-Man story. They would make changes to it here and there. But there wasn't like there is now, where you've got all these different animated versions of Spider-Man that's come out, all these video games of Spider-Man that has come out, reboots of Spider-Man that have come out, alternate versions of Spider-Man that are actual, full-on, totally fleshed-out comic series is Spider-Man. There was just the 616 Spider-Man, which included Felicia Hardy, which was a friend of his from school, believe it or not. And um, she, they actually had a relationship. So I'd always had a special place with Felicia Hardy as well. 
And when I seen this figure come out announced, I was like, no, oh, that's a definite. That's a full on straight up got to have it definite. So I bought this from uh, one of the third party suppliers. And you had the option at the time to, to buy with it the suggested TB League fights and figure body that came with it in their photographs of the figure, which should be at that point the closest version of the body and the shape that you want. So what they've got here is the uh, PLMB, so Fights and League um, Medium Bust, 2017 S23, Stainless 23B, which is for suntan body. So it's a medium bust suntan body is what they've included, and that's what they used in the photographs for the prototype images of this figure. And so it came from... Very cool toys. This is the man who made this. VCL1001. That's what this is. So let's check the, check the chat since I've been running by. Yeah. Noble, how's it going, man? You're always like the first person here. Good to see you. Save all me, song. You're a CBS sci fi. Great. We got some great, uh, um, solid, what do you call them? Um, the family here, right? I think it was. Flash Gordon for me. Flash Gordon. I didn't know much of Flash. Um, my my exposure to Flash was the 1980 or maybe 70, late 70s uh, movie with Queen that did the soundtrack. That was my exposure to Flash. And that was a really cool movie. It's, it's cool even to look back at now because I don't think they tried to make it campy. But oh my God, it is so campy. And it's so campy that it's cool. It's not campy bad. It's like, that's cool. And I love Flash, and of course the soundtrack. I'm not even going to attempt to sing it. To try to copy a Freddie Mercury, give me a freaking break. Not going to happen. That's my Flash, and I enjoyed that. So, this is the very traditional version of Black Cat, So, which is why I was going into the whole storyline of all the versions of Spider-Man that have been created over the years. There are several versions of Black Cat, just like... You know, Venom now, evidently there's like a new version of Venom from the, the latest, latest, late, latest last movie that uh, Sony put out, which owns the right to Venom, and they create Venom any way they want. Well, even before the movie, there was alternate versions of how Venom became into existence. Uh, with, of course, the original version of Venom was from Marvel Secret Wars, and now there's a, a version where J. Jonah Jameson's son was an astronaut and brought him back from Earth, and, and there's all several versions and uh, so this is the, um, the traditional black cat, as I remember her, black cat, from the, uh, the original comic line. So we have this bodysuit here. We're going to slip on her with some fur on it. Now, the fur is silvery, um, but would have much preferred it to be straight up white. Um, but I'm sure the silver will work. It's not necessarily, it's more like a dirty white, but it's, it's, it's not white, which I kind of wanted it to be, but that's fine. Go, Flash, go. Go, Flash, go. I've seen this funny uh, news blooper the other day, and they were talking about... Uh, Something about Marvel was celebrating a something. Something had to do with Marvel Comics. And the newscaster says, Of course, all of you have a favorite Marvel um, comic character. And for me, my favorite Marvel character is Superman, she says. And I like Superman the best because of his motto, With great power comes great responsibility. All right, so we got a fist. We got a gun holding hand. Actually, we have two fists. We have two gun holding hands. We have a trigger hand. And then we have two relax hands. So let's kind of blur through that real quick. Let me set these up. And There's your hands. Oh. 
All right, that interrupted the video stream, so I'm going to try to avoid doing that again. That wasn't cool. Got the camera turned around backwards from where I normally have it as. It's, it's zoomed in a little more, but I think probably the quality is a little better. I'm trying to find a good spot for this. So that you can see what's going on. Where's this going to? In here? Top of my head chopped off? That's fine. Y'all don't even see the top of my head, right? You're here for the figure, not for my beautiful mug. In the comic books, Killmonger is really from the beginning of it all. Because, you know, I don't know when Killmonger came out. Black Panther's been out for a very long time, way before Venom. Um, I don't know when Killmonger came into the story. The only... To tell you the truth, the only way I learned about the other Marvel characters was through Spider-Man crossovers. I truthfully didn't really buy any other uh, Marvel comic as I was growing up. It was just Spider-Man. I bought all this. I bought Spider-Man, Web Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man, Spectacular Spider-Man, all the annuals. I, I bought them all. And uh, so the only way, really, that I would learn of the other characters would be if there was ever a crossover, to tell you the truth. This came in the package here. It's going to focus in for us. No. Focus not going to work. Gosh dang it. Is that focusing in? Not at all, is it? Son of a gun. Well, I guess I'm not going to do any close ups. What in the world? This makes zero sense. Thanks for bearing with these technical difficulties. I don't see anything in here that allows me to change the focus. This is this is stupid. Gosh dang it. One of these days I'll have enough money to spend on junk like, you know, live stream cameras. Whatnot. Instead of junk as in toys. <laughs> figures. Collectibles. Action figures. So here's her um, accessories. Got a pair of boots. We'll be slipping those on her here in a minute. We have a neat little mask that came in this neat little case here. And again, with all the renditions of Black Cat that there were, there's different masks, different hairstyles, different outfits. So this is, for the most part, going to represent the Black Cat that I remember from the comics. I like this little box here. This is really cool. Black Hat is featured heavily in the Spider-Man PlayStation 4 DLC. Her character's design is great in that game. Got my first three figures coming in for 2020. Obi-Wan from A New Hope. Cool. Paid 350 pounds. So that's like, uh, that's pushing like 500 bucks. American, isn't it? Uh, brand new. Do you think overpaid or is that good? Got the QMX Jean-Luc Picard for 152 pounds. Love my Jean-Luc. Love him. Thank you. Thank you very much for getting that to me. Thank you. Doing a kit bash of John McClain. Cool. From the first one. Uh, look okay to me. Cool. Uh, in the newer comics, Wakanda is more like Asgard. They travel around the universe. Really? And Killmonger comes across a symbiote and bonds with it. Really interesting. We, we learned that later in the uh, Marvel comics. Uh, about the whole uh, symbiote planet. And on the whole planet, they all kind of resemble Venom, okay? Which was a huge problem with people uh, in regards to the new movie that came out because everyone was complaining that Venom looked like Venom, except for the white spider on his chest. 
Well, that's the way all the symbiotes look on the planet where he's from. He didn't end up looking like this. He didn't look like this because he encountered Spider-Man. Okay? Uh, he looked like this because that's how everybody on his planet looks. Now, the white spider, he manifests because, well, in the, in the Secret Wars, when um, they were on this, uh, I forget, planet or space station or wherever, they would get injured, they would go to this machine, and this machine would repair their armor or their suits or their bodies or whatever it was. And so Spy Peter Parker goes up there, sticks his hand into the machine, and this black symbiote, as we find out later, drops on him and turns into this whole suit. And we, that's not explained to us when that happens. It comes later as the story progresses. But that's how he became what it was, and, and the suit became black with the white spider on the front. For however that worked, I suppose it was because of the bonding of the mind that put the spider on there or whatever. But that is what separates Venom, the symbiote, from Venom, the cross-connection of the host of Peter Parker, is that spider on there. But all the symbiotes look just like this on their entire planet. We learn that much later as, we, as we've as we learned about the, the planet where all the Venoms come from, where all the symbiotes come from, the, the species. So um, people were angry in this latest movie because he looked like this minus the white spider and there were people that would say well he couldn't look like this because he hadn't encountered spider-man yet this is how he looks the only thing that made him when he encountered spider-man is the white spider and i'm assuming then i hope they're going to continue with this storyline and he was going to come across peter parker i hope i imagine and then he'll get this white spider i believe another thing that we learn later about venom and the Secret Wars is, because Venom is crazy. He's not like all the other symbiotes on his planet. You know, they're not crazy. Venom, truthfully, is crazy, is insane. And um, they explained to us that because Deadpool was involved in the Secret War, all right? He wasn't at the time. It became one of those post pre stories or whatever, and um, Venom actually encounters Deadpool first, and they claim from that, that's what makes Venom super crazy, is Deadpool. So, um, if all things were equal, truthfully, Venom first encounters Deadpool, then returns to the machine and encounters Peter Parker, and that's what supposedly pushes Venom over the edge and makes him even more so insane because Wade is not right either. A little bit of all of that. So it'll be interesting to see how Sony and uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe continue on along with the uh, Venom and Spider-Man story. To my understanding, Spidey's back in the MCU, right? I hate that I'm not going to be able to Give you a zoom in on this. I'll try, but it doesn't seem to want to focus in. She's pretty. She's pretty. Um, just very matter of fact, no smile. Uh, I can see some teeth in there, so her lips are parted a bit. Nice face structure on the sculpt. The, uh, the face is sculpted as it is. I might just turn the camera around so I can get these uh, closer images because <clears throat> this is really making me crazy I'm, this is this isn't going to work gosh dang it i'll turn this around so now this should give us a greater field of view and the ability to zoom in and out and focus thanks for sticking with me guys there's also point in showing you the detail on this if you can't see it stupid right greater field of view but the quality of the camera image goes down to, I think, 720, depending upon even worse 
my internet connection and how that's going to work for us. So hopefully this will be good enough. But now we should be able to zoom in. With the camera right there. You see that? Do we need to add light to that? Light sometimes totally washes this. That's why I hate doing it. <clears throat> see what happens now. All right, now you can see her pretty good, right? She's properly proportioned. The face looks great. The hair is silvery, so that makes the, uh, the, the fur look better in that capacity because it matches now the hair. And there's the style of the hair. I think what I'll do then is... Should I keep the light on right now? I want to turn it on for, for close-ups? Tell me your opinions real quick. By the way, I've made a spreadsheet um, on how to keep track of what the differences are on all the Fison bodies. I, I, I've been meaning to make a video that explains it all. Because um, if, if you've not researched it, like I have, it can be quite confusing. An A, a B, a C... Uh, a 23, a 16, a 4, a 17, a 2017, a 2015. What is the difference and why is it so different? And there's there's a lot of differences to the Fison's bodies, which can help you make a decision as to which Fison that you wish to purchase. Most of the time, for most Marvel characters, suntan body is what you're going to get. Um, so keep that in mind. The other differences then become medium bust, large bust, the muscle definition, and the uh, def what they the way they call it the defined private parts. Um, some of them they don't have any private parts and are just like Barbie. Some of them they're very specific, no doubt about whether there's a private part on there. The other difference then is the interchangeable feet. So you have the ones that, that have interchangeable feet, and then you have the ones that aren't. So um, so this is the uh, 23B, I think is what I said, right? With the uh, enhanced female private parts, detachable feet, 3 sets of hands, relaxed hand, trigger hand, and gun holding hand. So truthfully, if you want to take Felicia's gloves off, you have hands as well when you purchase this suit. Now, of course, the big question about fights and bodies are the durability of them, I suppose you would say, how long they last, the bleeding of different um, outfits on them, how best to take care of your face and body. And I'm going to tell you right now, I don't have an answer. Um, I try not to pose them into a, uh, a bent pose. Okay, I try to avoid this um, because the body will, um, what's the word I'm looking for? possibly crack and break, but the whole purpose of a Fison body is that you get the, the full seamlessness to it so that you can pose them, guys and girls. And I never, never did any research on the guys. I've never bought a, a Fison guy body. I'm sure there's just as much differences in all of them. But I try not to put them into an exaggerated pose. Now, with her being in here, it's not going to matter if I have her bent up. You'll never see it, and this is never coming off. Once this goes on, it'll be on 
for her entire life. She will never have this bodysuit come off. What will be the point of it? So that's the downside to a Fison body. But the upside is, if you want to not have any seams in anything, you know, knees, elbows, shoulders, if you want to make sure that it looks as lifelike as possible, can't go wrong there. Sometimes sliding these into here is quite difficult. Uh, let's go continue on the rest of the accessories. There's a whip and a belt and a little collar uh, device that she's wearing. And I don't remember um, if this collar device is indicative of the comics or, or where this came about. I really don't remember. Truthfully, that wasn't a, an accessory that comes to my mind when I think of her, truthfully. Curious if this opens up. I want to muck with it. Felicia Hardy, the black cat, she's a little touched as well. Her father was a cat burglar. Uh, I think he was the fox. He was a silver fox. Don't remember. And uh, I think they caught him and he went to jail. And um, Felicia Hardy was um, very agile, very nimble, very. Her dexterity level was high. So she was capable of doing great acrobatics, gymnastics. Um, she ended up getting involved, I think, with the Oscorp to or Kingpin to give her like a bad luck. And it ended up screwing things up. She had it removed or something. I don't remember what the whole story is. Um, she fell in love with Peter Parker. They became an item at one point. They dated. And I don't remember if they ever really knew who the other was. I think they did. I think they revealed each other's identities. I think Felicia Hardy knew who Peter Parker was before Mary Jane was ever in the picture, by the way. So she's kind of like, um, if I remember correctly, she's kind of like the other girlfriend that Peter had. So Peter dated Gwen Stacy, who was the police chief's daughter, and she died. Um, and then Peter... Uh, dated, um, if I remember correctly, Betty Bryant, Bryant, Betty Bryant, who worked at the Daily Bugle. She later moved on to marry Ned Leeds, who later became the Hobgoblin. Really interesting story. His good buddy, Ned. Be interesting to see how that goes in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I mean, the people put powder on this to slide it in more. I may have to do that. This is really super tight. Um, so Peter dated Betty, I believe, for a short while. They didn't go anywhere. Her and Ned got together. They got married. And she became Betty Leeds. And then Felicia Hardy. I think that's how it came about. And uh, I'm pretty sure he met F him and Felicia started dating before Mary Jane came into the picture. And then Mary Jane came into picture, and that became his his wife. So in the stories where they screw stuff up and cut out Gwen, Betty, Felicia, and come up with an, an MJ, who's not really Mary Jane, it really bothers me. I mean, it really bothers me. I mean, we don't want Peter Parker to be that that person who marries the first person he falls in love with. You have to have your heart broke. I mean, you really have to have your heart broke. I mean, you can't be normal <laughs> if you've not had your heart broken at least once. And God bless you if you married and have stayed married to the rest of your life with the first person you ever looked at and fell in love with. 
God bless you. I'm not that lucky. My goodness, I really should probably put some powder on this. This isn't working at all. All fice and figures are seamless. Um, the difference being literally the feet. So you have seamless feet and, and you have detachable feet. So that's the biggest first difference. So this is detachable. And then there's a, a fice and body series where the, the foot is seamless as well. And then you would angle, bend the, you would put it into a high heel pose or into a, a, a flat pose or whatever you wanted to. You totally move it. On, on the ones that have the detachable feet, they give you two specific feet. You have a flat foot and you have a, a high heel foot. So that's the main difference. That's your very first determination on a Fison body uh, would be whether you want the seamless foot or ankle, more or less. But all the bodies are seamless, totally. Uh, they, I've never seen a Fison. I don't believe they've ever made one that has a seamless ankle or a wrist. All of them have a detachable hand. So you're always going to have that seam there. Rather than that, all the rest of the seams, are, it's totally seamless. They call this uh, medical grade synthetic latex. Um, is what they, what they say that this is crafted from. She's squishy. Okay? So, she's squishy all over. All over. She feels, you know, squishy and she's very articulated 30 plus articulations easily I mean everything the little neck goes forward and back you have I mean you can pose a vice and body into virtually anything you could possibly imagine I mean you can really get a vice and body way out there okay you can put her into all types of gymnastic poses She can really be moved about. Um, so there's no limitation in regards to, in my opinion, how you could pose her in regards to the female body moving. She can be put into any position that a female can be put into. Okay. So touch her head to her feet and... Same way, going the other direction as well. You can have her straight down and touch her head to her, her, her knees or whatever, okay? So they're totally posable, totally posable. One thing you want to keep in mind, though, is on the, um, the, the older ones, they didn't have a stainless steel body. This is a stainless steel skeleton. Um, the older ones had plastic, and there's a ratcheting that you hear, you click, 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 as you move them. The new ones, there's no ratcheting sound. But keep in mind, on the new ones, as you move their arms about, pay very close attention to the direction that you move the arm. Okay? Because you can move it up, and then as you put it down, if you don't put it down in the exact same way that it is, you're going to get it all twisted, and then you're going to disjoint your, your joint, and then you're going to play hell trying to get it back into it. Uh, she's got the butterfly shoulders. I mean, everything. You can really move them. She is more flexible than you or I. That's that's the truth of it. So if you've never experienced a Fison body, if you've never collected a Fison doll of any of the limited edition dolls, you are really, um, you've really missed out on the beauty of a very well-crafted figure. And um, as soon as you buy your first Fison and you see how beautiful she really is and how articulated she really is, and the poses available to you, you'll be 100% sold. Now, there are other companies that make these types of dolls. I've not bought any of the other ones. I'm not familiar with the Jai doll or some of the others that have come out of late. Um, Fison, in my opinion, is the first one uh, that I um, felt was of this quality, only because I've not seen the others, and none of the others existed when uh, the Fisons were out, to the best of my knowledge. So... They've changed their name to TB League because of a of uh, someone scamming them. 
using their name in adversely, adversely in Japan, I will still call them Fison probably forever. So if you, uh, I think even if you go to Fison.com, you'll find their website with their, their uh, figures. Um, but they want to call themselves now TB League. I'm going to always probably call them Fison forever. And um, that's just the way that is. So I'm going to get me some powder and see what we got. I'll get one to do a kit bash. Laura Croft, that'd be cool. You saran, okay, saran wrap. Seamless ankles on the old models. So, uh, the seamless ankles are, are rare now. Uh, there's only one, I think, that's seamless ankles now. Most of them are, just as you were saying, um, disjointed. But there is one specifically. Um, let's see if I've... Um, I'm going hmm. Let me go get some saran wrap, wrap her legs up, put her on. I think we I kind of expected this to come with the body already on it. I didn't expect, truthfully, for uh, me to have to totally assemble her, for instance. Peggy Carter that came... Uh, last week, I think I had the choice of buying her with or without the body, and of course I chose with the body, and it came with the body. I, I was kind of under the impression that this as well would already have the body on it. So for Black Cat now, here's the other thing too, keep in mind, if you're planning on, you know, um, you could probably use a different body should you feel so inclined because your suit covers are up totally. You're not going to get the articulations that this is going to give you. And, you know, also the breasts on the Fison are going to look great if you decide you want her to show her with her zipper down. All right, let's see how this goes. Don't use powder. Uh, what happens when you use powder? Talk to us. Share, please. Uh, the suit has, by the way, little hexagons all over it. Um, which I would say would give her an updated look oh the saran wrap is really nice good suggestion cbs sci-fi you're the one that told me that right now and sabah newer thank you good suggestion it's really sliding on really easily well okay not easily 
but I'm not struggling as much as I was a little while ago. Good suggestion. Thank you very much. The tramway works better and it helps prevent dye stains over the silicon body. There you go. Thank you very much for sharing that. I'm trying to be careful here. What I don't want to do is I don't want to rip this, this suit. In all honesty, the suit is more important than the body in this instance. Um, it's like there's a couple of companies out there that have made Gwen Stacy's for Spider Gwen from the uh, Spider-Man multiverse movie. And i am it's funny when I look at the two of them, two different manufacturers, one's by Young Rich Toys, the other one's by, I don't remember. Um, the Young Rich Toys, I didn't care for the head sculpt. I'm looking at the prototype images, but I like the body, but I don't like the feet. The new one that came out, I like the feet and the head sculpt, but I don't like the body. So I'm looking at this thinking, I may have to buy both of these to make one that represents the Spider Gwen that I want. And I've bought some Spider Gwen other stuff. I was going to Kit Bash, try to find a way of making a Spider Gwen. Um, and I might still do that as well. But this these third party companies that have made her looks pretty pretty good between the two of them i i believe i can make a well enough spider gwen i hate to have to buy two of them though just to make one truthfully i might just go with just the one that has the better looking outfit and forego their head i don't know i, I mean the head's okay it's just not in my opinion perfect strand wrap good recommendation my goodness, I was really struggling, and this is a, there's there's obviously still a struggle, but it's much easier going on now. Much easier. Thank you. You saved my ass. See if I can um, show you the pattern on this. I'm wondering if it will show up on camera it, um, it looks very much like uh, the anime the uh, into, into the multiverse type of a of a of an image on this this outfit okay i don't know if it'll show up i hope it is i hope you can see the little hexagons that are on there that's what the whole suit is. So it's not black, like black leather, you know, like black. It literally has this design over it, the entire thing. Every inch of the black has these hexagons everywhere, on every piece of it. I think one of the Spideys is like that, isn't it? I'm probably going to need to strand wrap her arms too, right? All right, same with the arms, okay? Made a few Black Widows, some really sexy Hardys, and cat women using the Fice and Hell Yeah uh, bodies, and I tried baby powder but found it problematic, and saran wrap worked best. Perfect. So, uh, obviously, whenever you're going to that place where you are not going to be having to... Um, apply such a tight suit like you do with the Black Widow and with um, some of the Hardys, Hardys I imagine, um, then you won't need that. For instance, when I made my five some ready, Ray came with BB-8. I was buying BB-8. I don't care for Ray. She's a blah figure to me. So I figured, what the hell, I'll go ahead and customize her while I'm at it. So I put her in a Fison body and um, she turned out really well. Really pleased with her in that regard. And I yanked her her uh, shorts up 
above the knee to show off those her knees. Um, but that's my Fison Ray, and uh, I didn't need to saran wrap her at all, obviously. But that's a Fison body right there. I'm just not a Ray fan. She was just somebody that was kind of just thrust on us as, here's your heroine. With zero backstory. If that makes any sense. Now, I've not seen the new movie. Maybe they get all that resolved. I'm putting a big doubt it. From, uh, along with that, because I really doubt they resolved anything. How do you um, how do you then take care of your fisons in the long term? That's the next question. How do you keep them from degrading? How do you keep them from? Do you get? Have you ever had one get sticky on you? Strand wrap's a great idea. Thank you so much. I imagine if you wanted to, you could pull the saran wrap off once you get it on. But truthfully, uh, just as um, In Sabanur is referencing, and, and I kind of spoke on it earlier, is sometimes the material will die the figure and uh which is fine if you're never planning on ever taking her apart and it's not going to bleed onto anything that, that shows up you know if it bleeds onto the figure you know it doesn't matter big deal but if for whatever reason you think you're going to reuse your fison figure you know then it getting dyed or stained or if it's going to stain an area that you can see yeah it could be a problem i think i'll just leave the saran wrap on though I'm pleased with this suit and this head sculpt and this hair. I, I like it. Um, I, I was kind of expecting more white. The, the silver or the gray works. I don't have any complaint about that, to tell you the truth. I really don't. But I, I think I remember her, in my mind, as having the white hair and the white on there. But this is fine. This doesn't bother me. I really need a huge Spider-Man shelf. I can't even put Venom up here with them. Uh, so I have Spider-Punk, Scarlet Spider, Advanced Suit Spider. I've got my Mary Jane up there, which really needs to be more Mary jane -de. I've got Spider-Man Homecoming up there, which was actually a movie promo edition with the Homecoming jacket and whatnot on it. I've got a uh, Spider-Man I'm going to use for Underoos Spider-Man. The Iron Spider, both versions. The um, Hot Toys Iron Spider from Marvel Infinity Wars or the end of Spider-Man Homecoming or the end of um, Marvel Civil Wars and Marvel Infinity Wars. And uh, um, I've got Spider-Man from Homecoming or Civil War, or, I mean his go-to suit. And then of course I have Venom. So my, my Spider-Man collection is growing. And having some difficulty getting her up over her shoulders here. We're kind of stuck right now. Is that that? Deadpool's growing. I've got a casual Wade coming. Um, so, for me, my purchasing options are Sideshow, who are freaking, I don't know what the hell's wrong with Sideshow, man. Big Bad Toy Store. So, what problem, the big problem with Sideshow is 
I'm in the same state as Sideshow. I'm just, literally, I could drive there in like four hours. I get their figures last. They send it to me, UPS or whatever it is, FedEx Post or however they send it to me, and they charge me 20-something dollars for shipping. I, mean, I could almost drive there myself in, in gas, and it'd be less than what I pay in shipping to have a product sent to me from Sideshow. Big Bad Toy Store. Still get my figures pretty slow, but then they charge $4 for shipping and handling, and they're all the way out in Michigan or Minnesota or someplace in the Midwest. Um, so I prefer Big Bad Toy Store because of the $4 shipping. I mean, when you throw another 20 bucks on top of a figure, it's already between $200 and $400 as it is. I mean, it adds up real quickly, especially because everybody wants a good deal if you ever have to resell it, you know? And, you know, they see the figure sold for, let's just say, $300. And they're like, well, I'll pay you $280. Well, not only did I pay $300, I paid $20 of shipping or $40 in shipping and $20 or $40 in tax. And that $300 actually ended up costing me closer to $400. And, and now eBay is going to beat me up and take... Um, 20% of the entire sale and, and you want me to sell it to you for less than what I paid for it and the thing's in perfect condition and and, it's in, and you can't buy it brand new anymore and you know so I try to avoid buying from Sideshow if at all possible Big Bad Toy Store is who I will buy from um, first if I have the uh, opportunity to and uh, I love Big Bad Toy Store specifically like I said because of the four dollars shipping and because you can order it without there being a security deposit on most figures unless it's over I think it's 300 bucks they charge 10% then. But if it's under, I believe it's $300. It's under $300 is no security deposit. Now, Big Bad Toy Store will not sell figures that are not officially licensed. They avoid that. And so then I have to, to go to other retailers or resellers for that. So Black Cat had to come from uh, one sixth Outfitters. Now... One sixth outfitters, what you want to make sure that you do if you're buying from through them is one item, one transaction. Okay. I grouped together um, Ned Leeds, Peggy Carter, Wade Wilson, uh, and uh, two or three other um, purchases all in one transaction to have one big. They'll pay. I think Captain America uh, got in there too. They will not ship it to you until that entire order is completed. Now, now that may be fine with you. But, for instance, um, like the Mystique that was promised us oh, three years ago, and then after waiting like over two years, they canceled the doggone thing. Could you imagine if you had put Mystique into that same shopping cart and you ordered the Mystique, and blah, 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 and Captain America, and Iron Man, or whatever else, and you ordered all that at one time. And you ended up waiting three freaking years for Mystique to be filled. And during that entire time, your Captain America, and your Iron Man, and your Spider-Man are sitting on the shelf there at 1-6 Outfitters, and they won't ship it out until your entire order is filled. So, my casual Wade is sitting there, and we'll be sitting there until Ned Leeds comes out. And uh, I think one of the Captain Americas I ordered, and it's kind of it's kind of uh, bothersome to me. I really, I really uh, made the mistake of, of ordering all that into one giant purchase. If I'd read the terms, I would have realized that because it specifically states that we got a little string hanging right there. I'm gonna cut that little string off. Um, so now I make sure whenever I order something from them that I order one transaction per shopping cart, so that it will come to me as soon as it arrives. So this came from 1-6 Outfitters. 1-6 Kit is another company that I order from. And they're out of, um, I believe, Hong Kong or China. And they are really good in, in the shipping as well. Um, and they're pretty quick on getting it out to you. So those are the places that I order from. I've ordered from Toys Wonderland. And they're a little more expensive. But they will have pieces that probably are not anywhere else, to tell you the truth. If you can't find it anywhere else probably find it at Toys Wonderland, but you're going to pay for it, all right? And as a matter of fact, if you are, I mean, I, I complained about not getting my figures first, or get, or I complained about getting my figures last, however you want to look at it. If that's important to you, dude, you go to Toys Wonderland, and you can get the figure like a few days after it arrives in Hong Kong. So 
Hot Toys has the figure, bam, you got it in your house in, in days, all right? Um, but you're going to pay for that. So it, um, keep all that in mind as you're making your purchases because this can get pretty expensive. I don't even want to think about how much I really have sitting around here. But they are, are um, that's important to me. I, I like all of this. Let's give her, let's give her life here before you even have hands and feet on her. Let's give her life. So the body's just a little off um, from the head. I like it a little more sun tanny. Uh, I tried doing that with Ray. I tried getting her, dyeing her body out to match her head, and it was really difficult. I never really got it exactly how I wanted it. So I'm not going to mess with that here. Black cat, I'm going to leave her as it is. It's not going to bother me that much. And you guys probably won't even notice this when I show you her right now. Here she is. That is zipped up all the way, by the way, in case you're curious. I didn't pull that down on purpose. That's as far as that zipper goes. And then, of course, should you desire, you can display that however you wish in that capacity. Let's see, is that light shining in there good? Yeah, Felicia and Peter were lovers, boyfriend, girlfriend. I'm trying to remember. For the most part, they really kept it in uniform, more or less. But I'm almost positive they knew who each other were. I'm almost positive. I swear to God, I think that uh, Peter knew that Felicia was the black cat and vice versa. So she was kind of like one of the first revelations of his secret identity. It's so funny. After a while, Peter's secret identity was a very secret. And then, of course, with the Mutant Registration Act, which in um, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, they turned it into the Sokovia Accord. Peter pulled off the mask whole nine yards, revealed himself. However, Peter is not a mutant. And, and Marvel used to push that on us, letting us know that he was not a mutant. He was um, just a regular kid. No mutant ability. There's a zipper on these boots. I'm going to figure out which one is left and which one is right. Yeah, there's a definite left and right. That's left and right, proper. Okay. And that's not. the right one really so you've not had uh, the sticky figure you've not had your Fison figure come apart for our shipping and double box yeah double boxed the shipper comes the shipping box comes in a shipped box whereas I've had boxes come from Sideshow where the, the I mean the whole outside of the box is just totally destroyed and uh, then you start wondering whether or not your figures even made it um, now that Sideshow has started charging taxes in most states, yes. It's actually cheaper for me to purchase overseas. I live in New York. There you go, say well. One Six Outfitters, by the way, is in New York. They're in Brooklyn, by the way. P.O. Box is in Brooklyn. Uh, Hot Toys Justice League Superman body is just terrible, but the outfit and face sculpt is great. Remove the body and put in a new Fison M34 or 35. There you go. I, I've never bought a Fison male figure, so I don't know what the uh, differences are in them. And uh, from my understanding, they come with, uh, you know, the male parts, too. Um, so this unzips. This is going to make it a lot easier to get her in there. Uh, and it unzips. I could actually now put a foot in here. So, truthfully, if you wanted to, um, you could use a seamless 
uh, ankle as well. If you have one laying around, instead of having to buy a new body, if you want to use a body you, you may have. For instance, I've got a mantis body down here, a body for my mantis figure, which will be coming sometime in the next year, I believe, I hope. For Fison down there at the bottom. And somebody, I was I think it was Mary Jane, I don't remember who it was, I was looking for feet for her. So I now have a set of flat feet. So I'm obviously putting the high heel foot in this. I was watching Justin's review on the Superman Justice League body. I did not see the movie. I didn't. I really missed all of those movies. I need to. And I really want. Oh my God! Did you see the new pictures of of uh, of uh, Aquaman and the Golden Green? Holy smokes! What an amazing looking figure. But I was watching Justin's reviews on um, Superman Justice League. It looks really amazing. But I understand your. Uh, statement about the body after watching that and i can't even collect all this all the uh, star wars that i want i have difficulty getting all the marvel characters that i want I, that it's 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 impossible for me to, to try to add to all of this you know the uh the dc line i would i truthfully would i love you know like i said it's the old standby i know all about superman the original story Kyle, Mom, Pa, Kent, Kansas, the whole nine yards. I've been to Metropolis, Illinois. Been there. It's a real city. They used to have uh, big events there. Um, well, I don't know how big. They used to have like Superman events. I don't know if they still do or not. It's kind of like the city in Iowa. That was considered to be the birthplace of James Kirk. They used to have like a, a Star Trek thing going on there. It's funny how that came about um, as Star Trek was being created in the old days. They had made a reference of Kirk coming from Iowa. And it was just kind of like a loose reference. I don't believe it was ever like a matter of fact, here's the biography of him, you know, born and raised in Iowa type of a thing. It was just like a, a an in passing comment. And so this little bitty city in Iowa wrote to Roddenberry and said, Hey, we'd like you to make our town Kirk's birthplace. And Roddenberry's like, Okay. Simple as that, done. And that was kind of my problem when um JJ Abrams took over Star Trek and they had Kirk born in space. I like, come on now. Roddenberry said, Thou art born in Iowa. Humbada, humbada, hubada, hubada. J.J. Abrams said, Thou art not born in Iowa. Thou art born in space. Yeah, I got a problem with that. Yeah, uh, so uh, with Big Bad Toys, there also, if you don't want to pay the $4, you can pay more and have it shipped to you sooner, by the way. Um, but I'm already the last person to get it as it is. So what's another three or four days to save 10 bucks? That's how I look at it at this point. So if it was really important for me to be the first one to get it, did I buy from Toys Wonderland and have it shipped to me in days? I mean, damn, Hot Toys releases it. Bam, pick it up in Sideshow, or I mean, um, uh, Secret Base. Bam, four days later, it's on my doorstep. If it was that important to me, I would do that. But you will pay for it. It's going to cost you probably $100 more going that route. And in my opinion, that $100 can be spent on more figures than on one figure. I mean, if I was, if I had, if my viewership was to the point where Google was paying me hundreds of dollars a month to do this, 
then yeah, I would do that. But I'm not. This is still just a, 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 a hobby that I make a little bit of change from YouTube on. 40, 50 bucks a month, to tell you the truth. $10 a week is what I get from YouTube. That don't buy a Hot Toys figure. That'll buy me one a year, maybe two, right? So no, I'm not making bank. This is all really just a hobby. Not according to the IRS, though. This is a business. I gotta pay my taxes on it. I want the money, honey. Love the back of this hair. It looks, uh, you know, uh, normally I would think you would try to, to style this. I like how that turned out. It looks good there, cascading down her back. I really dig that. Now the next question becomes, there's no figure stand. How well will she stand on her own? Oh, she wants to stand up. Voila. Now... Do we do the mask or no? So the mask has a little string on it. There. And I don't remember her mask having a string on it in the comics. It just was kind of there. Um, see how the string is through that section of the mask? And the mask feels like metal, truthfully. I wonder if there would be a way of attaching it without the string. It's molded well. I'm just laying it on her face right now. It's molded well. Uh... I imagine if you could, if you didn't mind destroying your head sculpt, possibly damaging your head sculpt, you could probably do it without the string. But um, I'm thinking the way her hair falls on her face, the string is not going to be that noticeable. But no, in in the comics, her mask magically applies to her face. And I don't mean magic as in a, a magic a spell. I just mean like it's there. It's not it's not held on by a string or anything of that sort. Let's um, take her head off, stick it on underneath. Bad thing about these elastic strings is they do degrade and break apart and fall off. So you will probably be replacing this elastic string at one point in your lifetime of owning this should you decide to get one. Oh, God. This looks great. Oh, my goodness. And like I said, for the most part, the string is not even uh, really noticeable. Holy smokes. Have a look at that. That's Felicia Hardy. That's, by, that's the black cat that I know and love right there. You know, they could have been something. This could have been Peter's longtime love. She's crazy, though. Hey, crazy girls are fun, right? You never really know what you got. She's crazy. Crazy like a fox.
I am really loving this uh, as she comes together here. Holy smokes. I was really excited for her. It was so hard not to think I had her then, um, but I wanted to hold off because of the two choices of what I got last week and, and, and uh, of these two. I knew if I let off with uh, her, then the next one just would have been a total bust. Um, by the way, they used to not include instructions with your fice and bodies, and now they do include a uh, instruction telling you how not to bend it and um, what not and how to take care of it. So here it is as such, by the way. And again, they call themselves TV League now. I will always call them Fison. And they also now make 1 12th scale figures. If you are collecting that size, I suppose that would be like Marvel Legends and such. You now can get a uh, 1 12th seamless body and pop your Marvel Legends head sculpts onto that. Are you aware of what can help remove dye from the silicone? I'm going to say nothing. I'm going to say once it's dyed, that's it. It's done. I don't think anything can. Now, N. Sabah Noor says benzoyl peroxide cream, which is acne remover, 10% solution helps remove stains. Use a Q-tip and apply it and let it sit overnight. Use a baby wipe to clean area, but sometimes two applications are required. Will it 100% come out at that point? Get her little collar on her neck here. Popping the head off again. Hopefully I'm done with this popping of the head off. Will that totally 100% remove it if it's died out? I've seen people who have tried to change the colors of these through dyeing them, through putting a latex style of paint onto it, a silicone latex style of paint. Got a, uh, I've got the Mark 43 reissue. I've been given a tracking number on that on the way. And I, uh, I've been told that my Mark 7 is processing. So that they are on the way. Got two of those coming. I should have put this collar on before putting this fur jacket on her. Let me, um, let me strap this collar to itself, then put it over her neck. Just like a, a loop through belt. Pull it through to one side, then we're going to stick it through to the other side. Only silicone will dye silicon. Latex doesn't work well, nor does powder dye. Okay. So what if if let's say for instance I wanted to make a blue figure. Let's say I wanted to buy Fison and make it blue. How would I do that? Do you know for fact? Have you ever changed the color of a Fison? Intentionally. Poison Ivy, you made her green?
Because isn't there like two versions of Poison Ivy in the uh, DC Universe? A green version and a not green version? Tweezers. Permanent green. Silicon dye. Now, can you get that at, at like a uh, traditional art and craft store? Like, for instance, Michael's. That's what we have around here. And Michael's is everywhere, isn't it? Joanne Fabrics, maybe. Ordered online. And it's literally called Silicon Dye. That's good information. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> I'm thinking of doing like, you know, I love the female form. It's perfection. And um, I would love to be able to figure out how to make um, uh, Twi'leks from Star Wars or Andorians from Star Trek. Mystique would have been the mystique that that third party company had offered with the, oh my God, I placed that on order because I was like, oh, this thing's perfect. And I don't have any X-Men. Well, I have Cable and Deadpool and Colossus, but they're really, you know, Deadpool per se. And then I love the X-Men. Wolverine, Rogue, Gambit, Professor Xavier, Love the X-Men. It's just that the Brian Singer X-Men is kind of such a freaking mess. I'm hoping that now that Disney has a hold of them, they can get it all under some sort of sensibility. Deadpool exists with the original, I mean, not the original, the, uh, the new class or whatever, because we've seen them in the room when he was going through the mansion. McAvoy's Savior. Um, so she's got clips on this belt. Four of them. I don't know what's supposed to be on them. Custom shop. Now, what do you mean for the silicon dye? You mean a custom shop? This is well, this belt is going to hang around her hips, not her waist. It's fine. Kind of in between low waist, high hips. I wonder if there's supposed to be something on the front of that. I see nothing here. It looks like it's missing something. That belt buckle looks like there's supposed to be something there.
Ah, she's looking great. Now, to glove her or not to glove her? That is the question. Maybe we can do a left hand glove and a right hand not glove. Hmm? Make sure they're the same size. They are. Same size hands. So it wouldn't be disproportionate to do that. the other glove on her belt because now she's removed it. What do you think? Let's get Spidey down here. Get these two next to each other. Mary Jane. Get the family together. Don't know what I'm gonna do with this whip if anything, to tell you the truth. Ah, okay, paint store, gotcha. How did you like the Rise of Skywalker? I've not seen it yet. Um, doll or no doll, loving the back of uh, the back of her from ear. I'm with you. Uh, action figures, right? Just watched it really good. First act, last act was butts. So we can't talk about it. That's about as far as we can go on that. I've not seen it yet. I don't even know how long it's been out. What do we normally say, two weeks? You should have seen it by now. Probably been out two weeks, hasn't it? Gosh dang it. I need to go see the doggone movie. I really do. Um, I'm really pissed off at Star Wars, though. But I really need to see it. I mean, I was there from the beginning. I think I was... 10 years old, 11 years old. When Star Wars first came out, the first movie. So I've been there from the beginning, even though they turned on me. So here's Mary Jane as of now. Still got to figure out what to do with her. I, I want her more Mary Jane. -y. And here's how I have Spidey posed currently. Um, I'll show you how Mary Jane was inspired from this poison figure, and I'm on the fence about what to do with the pants, whether to um, full-on dress Mary Jane like poison is here. I, I bought two of the poisons specifically. Because I looked at that and said, well, that's Mary Jane. No doubt about it. And then I bought the um, Red Sonya because of the hair. And the images that they showed on the figure, the hair is just like this. Okay? But the hair that came has four strands of it that are braided. And so I'm really struggling as to whether or not to undo the braids. I mean, I'm 100% full-on fighting with myself in regards to that. So in the meantime, I've kind of done this with her hair to try to, to do it like this. I'm really, really having a hard time with these, uh, with these braids on what to do with them. I really wanted her hair to look like this, which is what it looked like in the images, this Red Sonya. 
or, or poison's hair, you know, and they ended up being braided. So poison, of course, is from Street Fighter, and here's the, the Spider-Man um, I have. This was the movie promo release. I bought uh, two of them. I sold one of them reluctantly. Paid um, the bills. I still have items up for sale on eBay. Reluctantly. I really don't want to sell anything. Nobody's biting. I still have a brand new Scarlet Spider. Still in the box. Making zero money off them. Just selling them for what I paid for them. This is how I have Spider-Man Homecoming Spider-Man posed as such. I've got, uh, <laughs> I think I showed this to you all last week. I don't remember. This is a Spider-Man, an old, like, 12-inch uh, Spider-Man that I bought to uh, turn into a Peter B. Parker. And as he came apart, I was like, you know, I'm not going to use this body for Peter B. Parker. But then when I got this this body, I was like, under Roo Spidey. So, I'm going to have to find some way of giving him some drawers and have our under Roo Spidey here. It's a terrible body. It's a... It's just a cheap, whatever it is. What does it say on here? 1995 Marvel Toy Biz. It's a 12 inch Toy Biz from 1995, which would have been Spider Man the Animated Series, is what this is from. Um, but he's pliable in his legs and his muscles. Not like uh, Fison. Uh, and then his body is hard plastic. So hard plastic and then the rubber. But it's not the same as this pliableness. But uh, this, will, this will work as Under Roos Spidey. I bought it for the outfit because I was wanting to make a Peter B. Parker. I still want to make a Peter B. Parker. Probably going to order the Peter B. Parker from Young Rich Toys or whoever it is that made that. No, that's okay. You didn't ruin anything by saying that. Um, you didn't ruin anything. It's kind of my fault. I'm really at the cusp of it. We like to say two weeks is like the extent of it. If you've not seen the movie in two weeks, then who gives a damn if, if it's been ruined? You know what I mean? So next week for fact, if y'all want to talk about it, go right ahead. Um, you're not going to hurt my feelings. But I, I'm going to see if I can't try to get out there this week to see it. It's so difficult. It's so difficult to get out of the house for that amount of time. And, I, I mean, I've got a brand new movie theater right down the, the street that opened up about a year ago. And uh, it opened up, as a matter of fact, with, uh, I think it was Infinity War. was the movie, the first movie that they showed in the theater. Or Endgame, I mean, excuse me. I think Endgame was the first movie. They, they, uh, they literally, like, you know, rushed it to get that out. They didn't even have any posters up. Showing in game, um, and uh, I think that was their first movie. That's when they opened up, and it's right down the street. So it's not like I have to drive miles and miles and miles to get to a theater. It's right right down the street from me. Um, but uh, it's just so difficult to get out of the house right now. And Star Wars is just so pissed me off so much. I'm so angry at Star Wars. I mean, I really am. And I'm kind of hoping that they'll fix it, but I have a feeling they probably don't my opinion on that without even seeing it or reading any of the reviews and no that didn't that didn't bother me what you said there I don't think that ruined anything it's not like saying Kylo Ren kills Han Solo that would piss me off but we can say that now because that movie's old so here we are we have Black Cat um, like I said I'm still trying to figure out what to do with this I kind of want to make her more look like this I'm really thinking about putting the shorts on her. Um, I may even just totally get another body just for Mary Jane. It was really was the head that I was going after because of this hair. 
Um, and I was really hoping the hair to be like this because that's what it looked like in the images, and it's and it's not. Um, but it works. And I wish Mary, I wish she had a more, I wish she was more personable. I wish she was uh, happier for Mary Jane. I would like to see a happy Mary Jane. I'd like to see a happy also. I want a new Pepper Potts. I want an updated 2023 Pepper Potts, you know? So this is some of it. You know, the rest of Spider-Man, like I said, Spider-Punk, Scarlet Spider, Advanced Suit Spider, Iron Spider, re-edit Iron Spider, and Venom. That's currently my Spider-Man collection. Hopefully, my Mark 43 will be here next week. It's a reissue. It's totally 100%. They didn't even change the MMS number on it. So there wouldn't be zero difference in it whatsoever. And I think they re-released it in, in conjunction with the Hulkbuster to give uh, collectors who came late into the game the opportunity to have the Mark 43 with the Hulkbuster. And uh, I ordered it because my Mark 43 right now is in there with the Avengers display against Age of Ultron. Ultron and I'd like to have a 43 out here. I, I had a complete collection until I sold the Mark 47. And um, I missed that figure, but... Got to do what you got to do. I might track it down one day. So what do we got? We're pushing an hour and a half. Anything else on your guys' minds? So next week will probably be the Mark 43 unboxing. Probably be what is going on next week. I thought he's been pumping out a lot of figures in the last two weeks. Farmer Thanos, Superman, Aquaman, yes. Um, it's so funny because it seems, for me, the moment that it's shipped out, I'm two months behind. So I've got Thanos coming. He'll probably be here in March. But this is the dry spell time uh, for the collection. You know, they push everything out for Christmas. And then January hits, and there won't be anything. So, oh, I, um, my uh, R2-D2 got pushed back. So, he'll be coming much later. Uh, I, uh, my Killmonger should be coming. I don't have a, a shipment verification on him yet. But, so, Eric Killmonger, R2-D2, Mark 43, Mark 7s. Wade Wilson. Casual clothes. That's what I've got confirmation on, of what's coming. But the only thing I know for a fact, because I have a tracking number, is the Mark 43. And Wade won't be here for a while, because he's part of that group that I bought. But Black Cat is standing on her own here. There's nothing going on keeping her uh, in this pose. So I'm probably not going to put a stand on her. I love her. If you did not buy her, I think you're probably going to be kicking yourself right now. If you can find her, I'm going to say you need to snatch her up. And I don't believe for one second that you will be disappointed in this at all. 
Especially if you're, you know, like I, I, I would say, an old school Spider-Man fan. And go for this look of Black Cat. If you're a, a new school Spider-Man fan, and you have a better attraction to the video games or the new rendition of Black Cat, then you may not have such a, a, a love for this as I do. But... She is super uber hot. The women in Peter's life. The only one that I can't imagine them ever making a character on. Maybe Betty Brant. And that's a crying shame, right? What would you use? Just a regular figure, right? I'm kind of like making a Velma. From Scooby Doo, right? Oh my god, the voice autocorrect. Farmer Thanos. <laughs> Armored Thanos. Hey, and I understood Farmer Thanos because wasn't that his thing? Wasn't that what he wanted to do when he retired? He wanted to go be the farmer, right? So it made sense to me. I know exactly who you're talking about. You're talking about Thanos with his uh, helicopter blade, more or less. Heck yeah, I've seen the images on Hot Toys China of all the, um, the bloggers that have taken photographs of him. He looks gorgeous. Oh my god, he looks good. And uh, Jason Momo, however you say his name, Aquaman, that golden green suit. Man, oh man, oh man. That would definitely be um, um, one that I would enjoy owning in a DC lineup. It's so funny because what I, what I, what I connect Aquaman to is the old Justice League cartoons back in the 70s, 80s. I think it was the 70s. And uh, Aquaman was kind of like, oh, great. You can communicate with the dolphins. Wow. That's cool. You know what I mean? And they really did a great job making Aquaman kick ass. You know what I mean? They brought him out of, more or less, the, uh, the water. I did see Aquaman, and I thought that was pretty good. Pretty well done movie. No problem with that. And seeing him in that golden green. See, now that's the hell yeah moment. We talked about this last week when, when I was expressing Captain Marvel. When... Captain Marvel becomes full-on, fledged out, just, you know, exploding with her power. Captain Marvel phases through that wall on that spaceship, and that's when you're supposed to be like, Hell yeah! Kick some fucking ass! It didn't happen. Jason Momo shows up in that golden green, and it's like, Oh, hell yeah! Now he's at the golden green, and that was like, Yeah, now that's, that's Aquaman. You know what I mean? That was that hell yeah moment that Captain Marvel didn't have. And it's so funny. Because in the last couple of years, it seems that people wanted to bash Star Wars and they wanted to bash the DC movies for whatever reason. And I didn't see very many of the DC movies. I remember, for fact, I've seen Cat, uh, Aquaman. I don't remember if I've seen any of the other current DC movies, to tell you the truth. Um, but when I've seen the DC movie with Aquaman, when he showed up in that golden green, you know, traditional, what I considered a traditional Aquaman suit, it was like, hell yeah, go get him. When Captain Marvel shows up, full-on, glowing, yeah. okay, big deal. You know what I mean? And that is the problem. I never fell in love with Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel suffered from the same problem that Green Lantern did with Ryan Reynolds' uh, Green Lantern. I didn't give a shit about the Green Lantern or the uh, the character. Didn't care. Watched the whole movie. I was like, yeah, so what? I don't even I have no connection with you. I don't care that you're suffering from your whatever condition that you've got going on with you of being heartbroken and out of money and blah, 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 and the whole world's shit. And you've just been given the ability of the Green Lantern force or, or whatever. And, oh, woe is me. Blah. Same thing with Captain Marvel. Oh, woe is me. Oh, my life is so terrible. Blah, 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 bull. And then there was just nothing that made me want to get behind her and, and, and urge her on to be more and more 
kick ass and more powerful. I never fell in love with her. Never, never was moved to cheer her on to say, go Flash, go, go Flash, go, go Flash, go. Never happened. Aquaman, I got that feeling. I got that, yeah, go kick some freaking ass. And, and, and there's a lot of problems with the Aquaman movie. Okay? I'm not saying that that by far is a superior movie. It's not a bad movie. A lot of problems with it. Okay? But there was that, yeah, I care for you. Yeah, go kick some fucking ass. Go, Flash, go. You know what I mean? And uh, that is what's required in a movie. If you can't connect with the main character, there's a problem. If you don't give a damn about the life of the character, Ray, you got a problem. The whole story is focused on this specific character and the life that they're going through. If you don't give a damn about them, there's a failure. There's an actual failure. Bumblebee, for instance, in uh, I forget which movie it was, number three, perhaps, in the Battle of Chicago, when he's about to be assassinated. I mean, at that moment, you're 100% hoping that they don't kill Bumblebee. You're like, oh, he's totally toast. He is so dead at this point, it's not even funny. And you, your heartstrings start getting yanked on. And you're, you're hoping that somebody, there's nobody there to save him. And, you know, that, that moment of having your heartstrings pulled on is what we enjoy in the movies. And if you don't have that connection, if you don't have that emotional attachment, if you don't have that hell yeah or that give a damn for the character, then that's a poorly written slash directed or even acted movie. If the actor-actress can't make you fall in love with them, if the director can't put them in a position that you are in love with them, or if the writer doesn't write in a position that you give a rat's ass to them, you've got a failed movie. Harry Potter. You are so caring for Harry Potter. You want all the world to go in his direction. And Professor Snape comes out, and you hate Professor Snape. Boo, hiss. And then Professor Snape becomes the hero. And then he's the bad guy. And then he's the hero. And then he's the bad guy. In each of the movies, you have that story that goes back and forth. If you don't have that emotional connection, you have a bad movie. There's been a lot of bad movies lately. And then whenever we complain that you've made a piss-poor movie, or you either wrote it incorrectly, or you didn't choose an actor or actress that can give us that feeling, or, or you've thrown somebody in here that you were supposed to fall in love with that we just don't give a rat's ass about and we complain about that? They tell us that we don't know what the hell we're doing. I forget the name of the of the uh, the theorist who wrote a whole thing on myths and heroes and 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 um and 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 how um throughout history the stories of mythology and the heroes there's a, a circle that they go through. They have to go through all these changes in their life. And every successful story or movie, for the most part, keys on these points. You know, um, you have the status quo, and then you have the, uh, um, the quest, and then you have the helper, and then you have the descent into trouble, and then you have the death, and then you have the rebirth, and then you have the... Uh, the um, the, the person stepping in or the power that's given to them, and then you have the um, reimagining, uh, and then after it's all said and done, you're back to the status quo. And every mythological story, every successful story and movie follows this exact same pattern. And I, I don't remember who it was that, that wrote this, um, who, who created this theorem in regards to that. And, and for the most part, it's, it's, it's true, especially in a successful story. And if you've got a movie that doesn't follow that circle... If you have a story that doesn't follow that circle, if it gets down here and, and your character's dead, because they like to say, Hollywood and writers like to say, if you can't kill your character, you don't love your character, you bullshit. You have to get back to the status quo. Back when Star Trek was huge, um, I would say it was probably the biggest in the 90s. You could write, you could write episodes for them, or even books. And uh, you could contact the... the uh, People, I believe it was Paramount who owned Star Trek rights back then. You contact them and they say, yeah, go ahead, submit your, submit your work to us. We'll, we'll possibly take it into consideration to put it into either a television show, a movie, or book, or whatever. But these are the guidelines that have to be met no matter what. The beginning of your story and the ending of your story has to be back to status quo. 
Kirk, McCoy, Bone, Scotty, Sulu, etc. have to be alive and the ship has to be well at the end of the story. You can do whatever you want in the middle. You can kill every single one of them in the middle of it. But by golly, when the book ends, they've got to be right where they were. And, and that's how it has to be. So whenever someone's like, if you can't kill your character, you don't love your character, that's bull. Because the character has to be back to status quo in order for us to have a connection to it. So it's okay to kill your character when they're in the bottom part of their life. But by God, there better be a resurrection. There better be a King Arthur sword in the lake. There better be something that brings them back to here in order for life to be good. So, I don't know why I got off on that tangent, but that's the way it is. Okay, Aquaman, Shazam, and Wonder Woman are good. The others are not. I've heard that Wonder Woman was really good, and I wanted to go see Shazam, because I, I remember Shazam, there was a, a live-action television show back in the 70s. It was really cute, uh, where he was traveling around with the... Um, I don't know who it was in in this um, like Winnebago type of a thing, and little Billy, Billy, I don't remember what his last name was, and then he would turn into Shazam, Shazam, which is actually Captain Marvel, you know, because there's two Captain Marvels, our Captain Marvel from Marvel Universe and Captain Marvel from Shazam, when Shazam was actually a copy of Superman, and it was a big, huge lawsuit over that, and blah, 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 and whatever else, but yeah, Shazam, Shazam, he would become Shazam, or Captain Marvel. Uh, that was my problem with the show Iron Fist. The main character was the worst character. All the side characters had more character development and were more fleshed out than Danny Rand, the Iron Fist. Bring back Iron Man. Yeah, and, um, you know, that's a crying shame when that happens, you know? And, uh, it's, people are so insensitive to us that when they make their artwork and they write Star Wars or whatever and they throw some crap together and, and you've got characters that have no development and you've got people that you don't give a damn about and whenever we rise up, they tell us we don't know what the hell we're talking about. They were stupid old fans that have no business following the new stuff that it wasn't written for us. Idiots. One of the things that I found online I thought was pretty interesting was a theory, a fan theory that Jar Jar Binks is more than what Jar Jar Binks was. You should Google this or YouTube it of, uh, of um, Jar Jar Binks. So when Jar Jar Binks came out, he was such a bumbling idiot that we, we turned on him. We did as fans. We totally did. We totally turned on Jar Jar Binks. He was just a stereotypical buffoon. And there were people that, had, that were butthurt over that. And most of us were like, this is stupid. Why is this idiot even in here? According to this one fan theory, and I put a lot of weight into this after watching it, and it really makes a lot of sense. Jar Jar was actually supposed to be the Sith Lord. If we as fans didn't turn on Jar Jar the way that we did, Jar Jar would have continued to become the Sith Lord. Oh, it's an amazing theory. Look it up. The, 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 this person who, who made the video even goes as far as to state that Count Dooku was thrown in there to become the Sith Lord because George decided that he couldn't use Jar Jar anymore because we as fans had turned on him so much. But when you watch this on YouTube, if you, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. I don't remember what it's actually called. But when you watch this theory that Jar Jar is the Sith Lord, oh my God. So that is the downside of complaining about a movie or a character. If it was true, if it was true that this fan theory is that Jar Jar was truthfully the Sith Lord, we really missed out on a great opportunity to see that come to fruition. We really screwed things up by complaining. If it's just a theory and it had absolutely no basis in fact, I'm glad they did Jar Jar the way that they did. You can actually find a version of the Star Wars movies without Jar Jar in them. Somebody's edited them all out if you hate him that much. But to watch this fan theory of how Jar Jar was really the bad guy, he was really the one, the Darth Vader more or less of that time frame, oh, it's powerful. It's powerful. And it makes you wonder how that could have actually come into play. 
is Jar Jar is out there just totally kicking ass against Yoda. Because remember, that was when we got to see Yoda totally kick ass was with Count Dooku. Could you imagine Yoda and Jar Jar fighting as Jar Jar a Sith Lord? Oh, man. We really missed out. And then there's other characters like uh, Grievous. I really would like to see more of Grievous. And what happened to ah 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 Ahsoka, um, the Padawan? You know, we really need to have closure on that. So we love Star Wars. And that's why we complain whenever they give us some shit. You know what I mean? Do it right. Do it right. That's all I got to say. I like how the first four Potter movies starts the same way. Harry warns a teacher something bad is coming and nobody believes him. You'd think after three times he saved the world, a teacher would believe him. Yeah, keep that in mind, though. What did we find out in the end? You know, I, I, I hesitate to say this because I truthfully believe there's still people out there that haven't seen all the Harry Potters. So I don't want to divulge the very end. Okay? But with what you just said, keep in mind who the characters were in the end. And now wonder about why they weren't listening to him. Robert, just a fan. Happy Saturday. Been gone a while. I think you saw. I have not. So we can't talk about Star Wars. Sorry. Next week. Hey, if I haven't seen it by next week, we can talk all about it you want, okay? For real. We, I'm, not, I, I'm taking the gloves off. If I've not seen it by next week, we're, we're, the, the band is off. But we can't ruin it today, okay? I did get the land speeder. Haven't been here for a while. Uh... First, Lucas made him too dumb. You have to leave some doubt that he might be a badass. Um, yeah, check out. I'm gonna I'm gonna approve this message. Check out that uh, fan uh, theory about Jar Jar. There's a reason why he's dumb. Uh, according to this fan theory, he's not dumb at all. He's a genius, and his his fighting style is a fighting style. Um, that we kind of see touched on in Rogue One. It's it's more or less a uh, um, the drunken monkey or the drunken man is the uh, the fighting style that uh, uh, this fan claims that Jar Jar is using, which explains the buffoonery of him. And oh my God, I'm telling you, man. After I, after I watched this fan theory, I was like, that makes sense. That full on makes sense. Didn't see Rise of Skywalker either. Luke's dead, so not much interested. Yeah, and I really hated how they killed him in that last movie, too. We could definitely talk about that. Full on, the last... Not, I'm not talking about the most recent movie. The last movie, um, it was almost like as if they tried to copy Empire Strikes Back. And, and it was stupid. They're on, like, white salt, which has, like, a red underneath or some shit. And then, um, you know... They're only lined up in a straight little row coming to the little mountain there. And Luke dies and he wasn't even there and all sorts of stupid shit. And, oh my God. And Leia phasing through space and time and all other sorts of crap. And yeah, here's the land speeder. It's a beast. Uh, I'm not real pleased with it. I'm a little disappointed in it. I'm happy to have it. But it's not, um, it's not what I expected it would be. Uh, I have no place to display it. So it is where it is, which is in a box under the table here. But this thing's a beast. It's amazing. Um, I'm happy to have one. I'm happy that Juice built this. But the little jets don't stay in. As you've seen, that one just fell out. So they're in the little things here. Um, it's not as high quality as I expected it to be. Really isn't, but it works. I didn't. You, I have a one six scale land speeder, period. Top of that. Do you? You know what I mean. It's one of those things. If you bought one, obviously you do. But um, it, it's like something is better than nothing. And this tells the story. There's so much Star Wars in this story. It's not even funny. This. Anybody who has any knowledge about Star Wars at all knows what this is. Now, you might not know it's as an X-34B, or I think is what it is, but you know it's the land speeder. You know it's Luke Skywalker driving the doggone thing. 
You know, Obi-Wan Kenobi's going to be in it. You know, he's going to come up upon Stormtroopers, and Stormtroopers are going to be like, how long have you had these droids? These are not the droids you're looking for. You know, that, that tells the story, so I'm glad to have it with that. Um, but no, it's not the quality that I expected it to be. Which scares me, bothers me, actually. Um, I've not heard anybody ever complain about anything that Juiced made. And this is the first thing I ever bought from Juiced. And it's different than just a diorama, like the uh, Star Wars diorama that he makes. It's different. It's a, it's a, it's a figure. It's a, it's, a, it's a vehicle. So with all that, it kind of scares me about the Millennium Falcon cockpit and the vulture, the scavenger, or whatever he calls it. It, it kind of bothers me. I will definitely go see Spy, uh, the new Star Wars movie. Definitely will. I, I hope it, it's supposedly the end. It's supposedly it. It supposedly wraps up the whole nine movies or whatever. Supposedly. You never go full retard. <laughs> what was that from? Uh, that was a Ben, um, um, what the hell's his name? Ben Stiller movie, right? Uh, what the hell was that? You never go full retard. <laughs> nice Lancer. You don't like Lancer? Ah, no. I don't. I'm a little disappointed. I'm on a Bionic Man kick. Oh, man. Got a one six detail version of Steve. Love it. I'm getting the second version. They're also making James Jamie Max and Bigfoot. Wow. Wow. Tropic Thunder. That was it. it had uh, Robert Downey Jr. Uh, doing blackface, believe it or not. It was really a, a very funny movie. Really a very funny movie, right? So, I guess that's it. I guess I've kept you guys long enough. Unless there's anything else you want to talk about, I think I'm about wrapping this up. I'll be happy to go on. I've got nowhere to go. We'll, we'll talk another hour or two if you like. I think I've about probably exhausted everything that I had on my mind. Unless there's anything at all that you want to see, talk about, or whatever, I'll grab anything off of the shelf. We'll do a review of it. The Fat Spidey. This one. So I bought... Um, I'll show you. I, I don't know where I am on this project. Still got my crossbones I'm working on. I don't know where this is. Let's get all these guys just out of the way a bit here. I love my little Spider-Mans. Let me tell you what's going on with this, how this came about. Black Cat, perfect edition. So I bought this Spider-Man, came with this outfit. He's a 1995 Toy Biz um, Spider-Man, 12-inch Spider-Man from the animated series, okay? Uh, and I bought this specifically because I had every intention, and still do, of making I'm sure you're seeing this as, as, as it's coming together here, a Peter B. Parker, okay? Spider-Man bum, right? The busted, old and busted Spider-Man. I got everything here to put something together, and I was going to use this body, um, but this body is so big that these clothes don't fit on him. So then I was like, well, how, what the hell am I going to do with this body? And then as I was looking at him with his head sculpt, <laughs> literally what came to my mind was Underoos Spidey from the PS4 game, right? So he is now going to be my underoos Spidey. I need to find him <laughs> some some underoos to make him uh, underoos Spidey. So that's why he's here. He is going to be my underoos Spidey. So he's a 1995 Toy Biz Spider-Man. Really can't get much knee bend there. That's about the extent of it. And 
same thing with the arms. You don't get much movement in the elbows there. And the wrist, there's no articulation. It just is flimsy, just there. Um, but I think he'll... <laughs> I was kind of making him into Peter B. Parker, but the clothes don't fit him. So I still need to get me a, a Fison M35 or 36 or whatever body it would be to make a, a, a Peter Parker or some other body from somewhere to make a Peter B. Parker. And I'm going to have me a little Peter bum. And I'm going to have to find some way of giving him some underoos. So that's the story with <laughs> this Spider-Man. That's how and why he is. How he came to be. That's that's him. That's why he is. So that's why I, that's why I have him. <laughs> Uh, Hot Toys Captain 2012 in-game buyer pass. Bought two. Two. I'll tell you why. Now you can have, with the face mask on, a 2012 Avengers uh, Captain America, which I uh, didn't get, with the proper articulated feet instead of the boot that he has. And it comes with the updated head sculpt of a more mature Steve. So you can do both of them. Problem I have with that though, Captain America is not supposed to age. Anti-aging serum. Stays young forever, but he does age. So, yeah, one way or the other, right? I am still selling stuff. I still have the Mark V up for sale. I did get rid of the Mark 47. I, I have the Mark 15 Retro and the Mark 46. Um, what do you think of collectors selling off their Marvel to focus on Star Wars? I think you should collect what you want to collect. I think that um, if you're tired of Marvel and you want to move on to Star Wars, hey, God bless you. You know what I? One of the things that I've always hated uh, about us collectors is we love to bitch. And um, one of the things we bitch about, one of the things some people bitch about, is. Oh my God, not another Iron Man. Oh my God, they made another Iron Man. How come they're not making a, a, um, a another Predator? How come they're not making another Stormtrooper? How come you're making an Iron Man? I want another Back to the Future. Wah, wah, wah. Well, Hot Toys makes what Hot Toys is going to make. It's going to make them money. If you aren't buying the figures, they're not going to make them. And we've seen that many times where you could still like go to this day, I believe, and buy a brand new Chitauri Warrior. I think Chitauri Soldiers are still for sale brand new. Uh, and that's a figure from like seven years old or something. Well, that's a problem. So when they come up with a new figure, do they make that new figure? They're going to be like, why? We couldn't sell the old one. Why the hell are we going to make another one? And, and, but then at the same token, you turn around and, and these people that are complaining about, oh, they've made another Iron Man, like 47 suits, 50 suits, 85 suits of them. It's all just a big cash cow. And then they turn right around and spend, spend buy 100 different versions of Stormtroopers. Seventy-five different versions of Batman, and they're the first ones to complain about. Oh my God, they made another Iron Man. Oh my God, why another Iron Man? I want another Stormtrooper. So I think it's cool if you're if you're dumping your Marvels and buying Star Wars. You know what that tells me? Uh, what you want? You got to collect what you want. You know what I mean? If you no longer have a passion or a love or a desire to see that figure. Then, then get rid of it. If you are now moving into wanting to do every Stormtrooper and every Boba Fett and every Bounty Hunter and every Astromech and, and uh, all the different versions of Darth Vader and whatever else, hey, God bless you. I, I would if I could. Uh, you know what I mean? I love my Marvel collection still, though. I, I'm, I'm really digging on the Deadpools. I'm really digging on the Spider-Man. I really want to complete my Iron Man collection. I, I hate that, that Robert Downey Jr. is done with Iron Man. I don't think he's going to be back anymore. We might see him in Black Widow. I don't know. I'd like that. Um, it'd be nice to see what the 48, 49, if we ever get a, a full-on answer what that is. That'd be cool. I don't believe one second that the rescue suit is the 49. Not for one second. Not at all. I know it says 49 on it, but it says 0049. 
Tony does not number his suits with four digits. His suits are numbered with two digits or Roman numerals. We see the first seven are numbered with Roman numerals. We see the Mark 42 specifically says MK42 on it. We know that Rhodey's suits have three numbers. They've always have 001, 002, 005, 006, etc. Peppers has four numbers, 0049. It's not an Iron Man suit. That's a Pepper suit. 49th Pepper suit, in my opinion. So we haven't had a definitive answer on what 48 and 49 is. Obviously, I believe Hulkbuster 2 is one of them. Unless that was built specifically for Bruce Banner to drive. Then it wouldn't be 48 or 49. I'm hoping that in the Black Widow movie, we get an answer to that. I'm hoping that Tony comes back in the Black Widow movie in a 48 or a 49 suit. That's what I'm hoping for. Because I'm, from my understanding, this happens before Infinity War and Endgame. Right around that time frame. From my understanding, that's how that happens. So that would be cool to me if we get that. I think it's crazy because there will not be another Star Wars film for a while. Well, we got the Mandalorian television series out right now. And I don't know if people have seen the slate for Marvel films of 2021, but there's four movies and three TV shows coming out. It's crazy. Uh, I've been watching old toy commercials of the 50s, 60s, right? There's a company called Marks. Looks like they made cool toy play sets back in the day. Plastic army guys, cowboys, Indians, riflemen, uh, guns, Navarone, cool. Uh, this actually is, this actually is a, uh, an old G.I. Joe jacket. Um, I'm talking old G.I. Joe jacket that I bought. For uh, to make my Peter B. Parker to make my uh, spider my bum Spider Man, so this is the old one six scale. This is classic vintage GI Joe stuff right here. So I'm gonna make my my Peter Parker my Peter B. Parker when he's done will be more authentic, <laughs> in my opinion, because of this old GI Joe jacket, a real army jacket, right? Two captains. One in the floor and another checking out America's ass. That is America's ass. Buy what you want and what makes you happy. Bingo. That's the best advice you can tell anybody. Because a lot of people that get into the hobby, I did the same thing when you first get into it. Like, man, I love one six scale. What all is out there? And you start buying everything. And next thing you know, you got a bunch of figures you don't even care for anymore. Careful doing that. Make sure that everything you buy, you have some type of an attachment to it. Because there's going to be a lot of figures you can't get rid of. No matter what, there's going to be figures that you'll be selling for 50 bucks one day that you paid $200 for. I hate to say it. It's going to happen. Uh, Hot Toys has gotten very expensive. How about they don't make a Hot Toys bird face from Star Wars? My brother asked me that. Who's bird face? I only get one if... Only get one if worth to me. I want two face since trying to finish my Nolan collection. Um, um, oh my God, who makes that two face? Is it Hot Toys that makes that? I've seen a two face out there. It looks really good. I've got Star Wars, Qmex, Star Trek, Iron Man, lots of Marvel Transformers, Terminator. I love Transformers. I I I I own a 2010 Chevrolet Camaro Transformers edition. Officially licensed Hasbro product, uh, Camaro, uh, that I drive. And I love that car. And, and of course, I'm, I'm a Bumblebee fan. I'm, I'm an old school Transformers fan. And um, But I, I, I've bought several little... Um, I have a lot of the little cars, too. There you go. See some of them. I've got many of those little cars here and there and about. Um, and I've got the real thing, too. So... It's 2010 2 SSRS CTH Transformers Edition Chevrolet Camaro that I love to drive. Let me tell you about driving this car. It brings the magic of Bumblebee to life. Every day that I drive that car, every day, without fail, somebody says something to me about it. I don't give a damn where I am. At a stoplight, 
getting gasoline, going to the grocery store, somebody either says something specifically to me about the car or I catch them taking pictures or videos of it. It brings the magic of Bumblebee to life. Everybody loves Bumblebee that's it's, it's a Transformers fan. And that car does it. It brings back that magic of Bumblebee. I love driving that car. Love it. Love it. I love owning that car. So it's a one-to-one -one replica. There you go. It's a one-to-one -one collection I have. It's a one scale uh, of um, a Bumblebee. Now, you can stand outside of it and you can pick it pick it apart and say, well, it doesn't have this, it doesn't have that. It's got the wrong size mirrors. The front bumper's not right. The rear bumper's not right. The, 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 the tire sizes aren't correct. Yada, yada, yada. But it doesn't matter. Hasbro signed a contract with Chevrolet to manufacture this product. It's a limited edition. And it's it's a it's an officially licensed Hasbro product. It is Bumblebee, as far as I'm concerned. I love it. Love my Bumblebee. Love 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 it. Uh, if I could get, if I could, I would get Luke Jedi version two, Bespin Luke, that R two maybe. Oh man, it's amazing looking at all that. I I I. I specifically steer clear of Star Wars for that reason, because I would buy them all. I've got the Astromax. I love all my R2-D2s. I've got the C-3POs. I'll buy the C-3POs. <clears throat> I'm, 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 I'm probably going to try my best to keep collecting the uh, the little droids. Dio, right now, the only way you can get Dio is buying another BB-8 and another Ray, and I, I have a hard time with that. I have a hard time with that. I've got the Jawa and the Power Droid on order. I like to collect the bounty hunters. I have to get me a Luke from Star Wars: A New Hope and an Obi Wan to go with the land speeder, and I've got to build, build some stormtroopers up to go with that. So that's definitely the plan there. Uh, only definitely is Two Face and a Kit Bash Bane, Bane the badass that broke Batman's back. Right? Robert Downey Jr. is in Doctor Doolittle. Really want to see that. Oh man. I love Robert Downey Jr. Always have. Him and I are about the same age. Hey, you're late to the game. Welcome, Buzz Light Light, light Beer. <laughs> I love the name. Still happy to have you. Wish everybody a very relaxed weekend. I do too. Uh, love my QMX. Got Kirk, Spock, McCoy, Picard, and the chair. Was tempted getting the rest, but stopped. I'm so thankful that one of you guys mailed me a, uh, a Jean-Luc Picard. Thank you. I love Jean-Luc. This figure is amazing. What a detailed likeness. If, um, if you're a Star Trek fan, you can't go wrong with the QMX line. Uh, this turned out amazing. No question about who that is. I don't look at that head sculpt and think that they did a terrible job. Is Jean, it is Patrick Stewart? It is Jean Luc Picard. It comes with some great accessories. It comes with a a um, a, a phaser, handheld Type Two phaser, and a um, tricorder. It comes with a pad and his Earl Grey hot tea, and it's an engineering pad. The red ones are the engineering pads compared to the gray ones. Uh, so that's what it comes with. I'm really pleased with it. Really fine quality on that. I love it. You can't go wrong with QMX. Con! I don't want to like Mandalorian. Afraid he'll fall in a pit. Oh, man. You know, that was uh, George's. He made, he commented about that a lot. He said he really made a mistake killing Boba Fett. He, uh, he didn't realize he was going to be as popular as he was. Back to, if you love your characters, you'll kill them. Yeah, well, he regretted that. I've got Jean-Luc over here hanging out with the Astromex. That's where he is, by the way. Star Trek Star Wars joke there. Uh, if anybody got any ideas on how I'm doing to dirty up John McClane kit bash from Die Hard, one hot toy store body. Um, I use uh, makeup and just smeared makeup on him. That's what I did. Eyeshadow and whatnot. Which one is your all-time favorite Iron Man suit? Oh, man. Yeah. God, you can't put me on that spot. I, I, 
I'll say this. As I was boxing up two of the Iron Mans that I sold, I sold my Mark 47, and I sold my Mark 3 Mark Gunmetal. Both of those, as they were going in the box, I was almost at tears watching them go bye-bye. My Mark III gunmetal that I had was in perfect condition. Super tight. Not a flaw on him. And we're talking about a figure that was nine years old. Beautiful condition. Love that. The Mark 47 is so versatile. Comes with so much stuff. And the open helmet. What an amazing piece. I suppose if only one, if only one, if only one, if I only have one Iron Man, only one. I haven't seen the Mark 85 yet, obviously. But, and I've not seen the Mark 7 die cast yet. It would have to be a toss up between those two. I'm expecting the Mark 7 diecast to be just as fine a quality as the Mark 4 and Mark 6 diecast are, which are amazing pieces. So I suppose if only one, I would have to say the Mark 7 diecast. And I've not even seen a Mark 7 diecast yet. But if it was only one, if you wanted to collect one that I think tells the story, Mark 7 diecast. If you're one of these guys that, that touches all the universes, if you've got... Predators and Back to the Future and Spider-Man and Star Wars and, and um, DC and, and everything. And you're like, well, I can't go full on and getting 85 versions of Iron Man. I only want one. I would say the Mark VII die cast. Only because the four and six die casts are so good. And, I, and I've got a handful of the sevens. I've got a, a seven, a Battle Damage seven. It's got a lot of stuff in them. I've got the, the, the chocolate and the white chocolate, and I love them. Um, but I think if you're only going to get one, only one, it would probably be the Mark VII diecast. Other than that, I can't necessarily say that any one is any more my favorite than any other. There's some that I kind of like, eh, like Bones, you know. Eh, he's he's a completest piece. I doubt that they'll remake of Bones. Got two, both versions of them, the original brown and gold and the red and gold, which is kind of a chrome. And I love both of them. But I, I, I think he's more of a fan favorite instead of just a regular... I, I, I don't believe anybody that's just putting an Iron Man out is going to go buy Bones. I think if, if, if you've if you got DC and Back to the Future and Predator and Aliens and all these pieces and you're just wanting to add one Iron Man in there, I, I can't believe Bones to be that Iron Man that just a casual collector would get. Matter of fact, I've seen there's, a, uh, there's an Iron Man outfit, a, a, a Tony Stark outfit of him in the white suit where he's on the phone with uh, Peter from Homecoming. It's pretty cool. I thought, I'm thought i thinking about getting that, the, uh, the white outfit of um, Robert Downey Jr. slash Tony Stark when he's on the phone when Peter's like, uh, I can't believe he came out here to rescue me when he's drowning in the lake or whatever. And he opens up the helmet and he says, oh, not even here. And then we see him all the way over in India or someplace, I'm not sure exactly where he is. And he's wearing this outfit with the scarf and all that. You can You can buy that now. Um, and uh, which is such a powerful point because when Peter's having his nuclear meltdown and and uh, the Mark 47 shows up and Peter's like, if you even cared, you'd be here right now because he then assumes that he just sent an empty suit and that's when Robert Downey Jr. steps out of the suit. What a powerful scene. That is how you write a good movie. That's how you, you put a scene together. Robert just fan, do you think we will see an Ahura figure from QMX? I would hope so. She's 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 not necessarily the, the main characters. You know? um, Spock, Scott, Spock, Scotty, Kirk, McCoy. Really, that's the four. Um, and uh, everyone else, Sulu and and uh, Chekhov and and uh, Khan, all these guys were extras. But Ahura really is there. You know, we we need an Ahura. We really do. If you're going to complete the scene, I don't know why QMX would not make that. Now, I, I can imagine from a business viewpoint, they might not. Because, again, it's it's a completest piece. It's not Spock, Kirk, Scotty, McCoy. You know, it's not one of those four main characters. Uhuru wasn't in every scene. But she's a completest seat piece, like Sulu and Chekhov. They're completest seats pieces. And, and the completest will get it. So I can see how they wouldn't make it because of that reason, for fear of not selling that many of them. But she's important. 
especially because, as everyone knows, Kirk and Uhuru did the first interracial kiss on television. Big, big deal. Big deal. Nowadays, it doesn't even... I don't even think that even phases the majority of people anymore, seeing something like that. It's not even, it's not even taboo. For the most part, it's, it's like the last thing that's even on anybody's mind. But back then, in the, in the early 60s or late 60s, whenever that was, 66, 67, I don't remember when it was, that was like, holy smokes, I cannot believe you did that. People wrote in and complained about that. So, yeah, you need, an, you need a new Lieutenant Huru. You, you need one. They need to make one, for fact. I do not, man, I tell you what, the reason I never bought a 3A Bumblebee is because they have yet to make the 2007 Bumblebee that I own. They have a Dark of the Moon, they have uh, all the others that they've made, they have yet to make a 2007 Bumblebee. 3A has not. I've got the head sculpt from that, but because that's the car I own, that's the Bumblebee I want. You know what I mean? I don't have the Dark of the Moon. I don't have the Revenge of the Fallen. I don't have... That is not my car. My car is the first movie car. So that's the Bumblebee that I want. And it pains me every time I see one of these beautifully sculpted 3A Bumblebees. And and uh, they sell for a pretty price. I, I, I so much so... Gosh dang it, I want that. But it's not my Bumblebee. You know what I mean? It's not the first movie Bumblebee. And there's actually you know, there's two... Bumblebees in there, the '77, and then and actually, truthfully, um, they they pay an homage to the Volkswagen Beetlebug in that as well. So there's a uh, um, there's two in there. There's two transitions of him in his full on um, Autobot Transformer figure. He's in he does it as a 1977, and he does it as the uh, the 2007 Camaro. And they have yet to make that 2007, you know, uh, Bumblebee. Camaro. That's why I don't have one, but I surely would. Uh, I think so. I've heard they had a prototype. I kind of wish they would do an updated bridge for the QMX. Oh, that would be cool. Maybe background dioramas. Uh, you think we'll get any Birds of Prey hot toys? Birds of Prey? What is that? Oh. What? No, I don't think that they will. Uh, I know how you feel. Liam Neeson is great. That's why I drive an Altima. I call it the Liam Neeson. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> I dream figures right now. Luke Jedi, version 2, Bespin Luke. R2, new version. I've got that coming. Uh, Flash Gordon, Ming, 4th Doctor, Baker version 2. Bionic Man version 2 by Superman. And Two-Face. Two-Face and Bionic Man definitely are getting. I uh, love the Steve Austin. I watched Bionic Man, Six Million Dollar Man all the time back in the day. That was a, a, a you know, we cheered for him, right? I got the uh, NBC app on my phone. So happy it has all the old shows on there. Six Million Dollar Man, Bionic Woman, Xena. Love Xena. Hercules, Battlestar Galactica, the old Battlestar Galactica, the original Battlestar Galactica. You know, I've not seen any of the new Battlestar Collectives that came out, what, 15 years ago? New and old. Knight Rider, new and old. Uh, and Night Gallery, Kolchak, the Night Stalker. Uh, Siri, I'm with you. Mark 7 is it. Closely followed by the Mark 5, 2, and 47. There you go. We're on the same page. The 50 and such new ones are cool, but the 7, that's, yeah, the 7 really, if you're getting 1, if 1 is it, the 7. And you can display the seven in so many different ways, truthfully. You can do it with or without the shoulder rockets, with or without the thigh rockets, with or without the chest um, side pieces, because we see all that in, in the different ver incarnations of him in the movie. It's the pieces, the, the suit was, was just constantly evolving into discharging the rockets here, discharging the rockets here, discharging... The, the little pieces on his chest for thrusters. So you can display him in that manner too. Many ways you can display your Mark 7. Many ways. All my favorites, no one heard of. I just wish they had Hardy Boys and Dancy Drew. Uh, Columbia and Vegas. Uh, Vegas, what was his name? Dan Tanner. Wasn't that his name? Uh, QMX, yes. 
Doom them all, even next gen. The only Hot Toy is going to get is Two Face. The rest 50 50, just way too crazy on the wallet. Sulu's on his way, cool. I thought he was already out. Uh, he's on pre order. I can't find him in the UK. I wish the QMX would do an updated bridge placement like the old Megos. That'd be cool. It'd be huge. It would be huge. Maybe some backgrounds. He's out in the USA. The transporter. Oh, you gotta have the transporter. Is anyone pre ordering the Jurassic Park figures and the Dino in 1 6 from Chronicle Collectibles? So that's a good question. I, I would like to get a hold of a T Rex, a 1 6 scale T Rex, to tell you the truth. Um, Iron Man diecast, it never stops at one. <laughs> one. You'll always want more. True. Absolutely the truth. You always will. All this love for the Mark 7. Is anyone interested in the sideshow maquette of it? Um, so I guess that's where I stand also is I'm really a 1-6 scale collector and everything else kind of just falls along into that sideways. So I've seen some beautiful quarter scale, third scale, legendary scale, half scale of uh, these figures as well. So if you're like a, a, a hardcore um, Iron Man fan, for instance, the bigger the scale, the higher the quality it appears. The quarter scales are amazing in what I've seen in that regards. I've seen a beautiful Mark 17 Heartbreaker. Oh, my goodness. Um, it's just that I'm, I, I'm really just on the 1-6 scale. You know, I, I uh, my Bumblebee goes outside of that because I own the car. And to tell you the truth, how that came into to, to, to story is when the Camaros came back, because they stopped making Camaros in 2002, they were done. The president of Chevrolet said, we're not making another Camaro. If we ever make another Camaro, it won't be a rear-wheel drive car. We're just not selling any of them. They're done. We're done with Camaro. Camaro's gone. So they quit making them in 2002. When the Transformers movie came out and the Camaro was in that movie, it rekindled the, the fire and the spirit and everybody wanted one. And then they, they made them in, in 2009 and they sold, I think, 185,000 of them or something like that. An insane number of these Camaros were sold. And about halfway through, they, they, uh, they, uh, in 2009, around July, they came out with the Transformers Camaro. And I told my wife that I was going to buy a Camaro. I'm like, I'm buying a Camaro. It's all there is to it. I've got to get me a Camaro. And, and she said to me, well, which one are you going to buy? And I said, you know, I, I, my favorite color car is this dark blue. And they make a beautiful dark blue Camaro with silver stripes on it. It looks really good. And I said, I'm, I'm really leaning on that. I said, however, there's the bumblebee factor. And my wife's like, what the hell is the bumblebee factor? And I said, well, they make a, a Transformers edition Bumblebee Camaro, and it literally says Transformers on the running board and on the center console and and on the on the dash and it has the emblem on the side and it's officially licensed Hasbro product. And I said I I I have a feeling that if I don't buy the Transformer Bumblebee, I will be saying to myself for the rest of my life, I wonder what it would be like to drive a Bumblebee. I, I, that literally that was what I told my wife. So I went to the store, not certain what it was I was going to get. I decided to buy the Transform Bumblebee. When I came home with that car, at that time, Google was talking about auto drive cars. Cars are going to start driving us around everywhere. And we were watching that on television, and they excited us. So I, I bought the Camaro, and I, and I bought it with the, uh, the push-button remote start. So I take my wife out to the car. And I'm like, oh, baby, come, you have to come see this car. I love this car. This, this car is going to blow your mind. So I open up the driver's seat at, at the door. I put her in it. And I'm like, watch this, baby. You're, you're going to love this. So I took the remote, and I put it to my mouth as though it was voice activated, and I pushed the buttons to start it. I said, Bumblebee, room, the car comes to life. Now, I just pushed the buttons, but the magic that I created for my wife at that moment was that I just spoke him to life. Like so many times happens in the movie. She looked over me, and she goes, no way. I'm like, oh, baby, you ain't seen nothing yet. Watch this. Bumblebee, drive to Taco Bell. My wife, that twinkle in her eye, the moment that second happened, 
she believed that that car was going to drive out of the driveway and go to Taco Bell. She looked at me and she goes, get the fuck out of here. I said, no, I'm just kidding you. It's not driving anywhere. But for that split instance, she believed that Bumblebee was going to drive her to Taco Bell. And now I have a, a Mercedes that almost will do that. It drives itself down the road. You ain't even got to touch a steering wheel or the gas or nothing. Right between the lines. So we're getting there. And that's the beauty of owning that Transformer Bumblebee. That's the beauty of it. That's the magic of it. And everybody that sees that car. I, I, I'm Without fail, I'm not trying to jinx it or make it stop. Without fail, every time I take that car anywhere, somebody either says something or I'm sitting at a stoplight and they're out there with their camera taking pictures of the car. And I love that. It brings that magic to life. And that's the whole reason I'm collecting these as well. You know, you sit there and you grab this figure and you look at this with the, the high detail to it. And and for that instance, you know, when, you, when, you, when you're holding this figure and you're able to rekindle the movie and the magic and the emotion that you felt when... T'Challa becomes the Black Panther, you know, when he's out there kicking total ass. You, know, you get that memory, and that's what we want. We're nothing without our memories, right? Our memories remind us of everything and, 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 and encourage us to do more and become what we are. Uh, Aaron, uh, 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 no, one six Jeff Goldblum, he's definitely a sellout. Put a voice chip in him, too. Press a button, hear him say, uh, <laughs> Man, I really want to know what Hot Toys will have in store as special items for the 20th anniversary, just like they did on the 10th. Mm. I will hold back with the new POs until I know since these figs are more limited, I guess. I don't know what to say about that, to tell you the truth. I don't think, truthfully, very many figures are really limited like they were back in the day. Truthfully. I don't, I don't, I'm not so certain. I want a new Transformers movie with a gremlin, a Yugo, a Pacer, and a Pinto. You're crazy, man. The Expendables of Transformers. <laughs> I really hope it, it'll be that Mark I, hopefully with a cave, Tony. That'd be cool. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the Mark One. I. I really am. Aiden Bayford, I think you could be right. I, I, uh, I, I, it would be nice to have a cave, Tony. I wait till we have the flying DeLoreans. Did you see that cave, Tony? It looks really good. I, I've seen a couple of, I've seen a couple of caves. I've seen a, a there's a, a, someone has made a, a, uh, uh, they've redone an old, um, uh, uh Iron Man, I, uh, Tony, uh, Tony Stark. I've seen that, I've seen that, and it's pretty exciting. I've thought about getting, um, some of the old remakes by third party companies that have done that. I really have. I've, I've, I've thought about that pretty hard. Uh, um, now that I have my Mary Jane over here, because one of the questions I had, I couldn't find any feet, was uh, did these boots come off? It's, um, it's not a fan of these boots, truthfully. These Red Sonya boots. Um, I now have feet. Let's put Mary Jane barefoot. boots. I thought I had feet. I looked everywhere. I didn't have any spare feet anywhere. Now I have her some feet. Her cute little bare feet. 
Yeah, this is much better. And, and truthfully, on a lot of the comics with Mary Jane, she's just lounging around the house. I mean, that's the truth of it. She ain't doing much. She's just chilling. You know, she's, she, she was a soap opera star. She, um, she was a uh, Broadway star. She was a waitress. She's actually done a lot of things. Um, she was a model. Uh, so she's done a lot of things. You could you could you could be very creative in in the display of her, in the uh, pudding of her. But it's so funny because truthfully, what comes to my mind whenever I am envisioning Mary Jane is her just chilling around chilling around the house. So got those boots off and got her in a bare feet. And I think this is much better. I, I didn't care for those red Sonya boots for my Mary Jane. So I think this works. It's much better, I believe. The bare feet. That works. I'm digging it. You have to paint her, paint her little toenails, right? <laughs> Put some uh, polish on them. Might have to do that. This works. What do you guys think? Is that a good Mary Jane? And we have extra hands now. So I can do this casual hand instead of this pistol finger. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, there we go. Now we got Mary Jane from Immortal Life. I might keep her jeans on her instead of putting her in the shorts. Well, I've already got poison over here in the shorts. I think this works. I'm digging this, guys. What do you think? How do you like my Mary Jane now? How you like me now? So I gotta do something with this hair. Speaking of hair, there was a person I've seen on Facebook that had taken this um, Infinity War Black Widow or in-game Black Widow. I don't know which one she is, actually. And done her hair right. Oh my god, I so want to have that treatment done to her. I am tempted to get the cave Tony. There's a great third-party diorama piece. Yes, the only one's going to get this here is Two-Face, Iron Man, Flash, and Ming, and the fourth Doctor, the rest are, man, for me, already hard on the wall. I ain't kidding you. Is that diorama the one with Tony and the boulder and the pail and the Mark I faceplate? By T-Soys? Yes. T-Y's Toys? That's a sweet diorama. In the Spider-Man PS4 game, she is an investigative reporter. I, I, I have not bought the uh, PS4 game. I would so enjoy playing that. Uh, I've talked to my wife, who is a, a native of New York City, uh, and um, about the accuracy of the the game, and she's blown away. We've watched a lot of videos on it, and she's like, "That really, they've done a really good job making that look just like New York City as she remembers it." And um, I, I'm a huge, obviously, a huge Spider-Man fan. I would love it, but I just don't have the time and the money to, to spend on that. But I would so get that and, and enjoy having every one of them play the hell out of it. I keep seeing Pepper looking at my. Uh, where'd that go? I keep seeing Pepper looking at MJ taking her job and saying, bitch, sorry, just keep seeing that. <laughs> uh, she's the secretary, at least in the comics. That's not MJ. She looks nothing like Zadaya. Oh, my God. Literally, here I am in the movie theater. When she says, call me MJ, I literally just blurted out, no fucking way. And I couldn't believe I did that. I didn't mean to. But I did mean to. Because that's not MJ. It's not. I don't give a damn. Period. 
Her name is not Mary Jane either. So that pisses me off. Totally pisses me off. That's some bullshit right there. You know what I mean? That's some bullshit. It could have been anybody else. It could have been any other girlfriend of his. We could we could have introduced a brand new girlfriend, which they did essentially. They they didn't have to make her MJ. That's total and complete bullshit. That's bullshit. No way hands are butts about it. That's bullshit. It's not Mary Jane. Uh, what was her name? Jane is female Thor, right? Be cool. It would be cool. So, anything else on your guys' minds before we wrap this up? I'm going to turn these lights out, see how these figures come with the lights off. Sometimes the lights wash them out. That make anything better? Or no? Yes, this is Poison from Street Fighter. Sure is. And uh, I bought two of them because I, when I first seen this, I, was, I immediately envisioned making this. So I was going to put uh, the shorts and the shirt and the shoes on MJ. But now that I, I found the Red Sonya, which became MJ, and she came with these pants, I think I'm going to keep the pants on her instead of just making a, a, a duplicate of this. It just seems silly at this point to have a red head and a pink head of the same character. It just didn't, it didn't sit well with me. So I'm happy she's in her jeans, or leather pants, really. And now I'm, I'm happy I have the bare feet. And this is the same shirt. Um, she wears a shirt like this a lot in some of the images with a like a heart, a Spider-Man heart on it, um, which is cool. But this works. But yeah, that's who that is. That's poison. Sure is in a feisten body. Seamless ankles. That's what we talked about earlier. So the way Poison came about was, you know, they made her as such. And then the big question came about was, they're beating her up. She engages in the battle. She challenges you. You didn't track her down and go beat her up. So what they decided to do to make people satisfied, if this even makes any sense whatsoever, is they said that she's like a, a trans or something or whatever, where she's got... Not only the breasts, but she's got the male parts, too. And that made it okay to beat her up. And that's even more insane. That goes from being um, controversial to being, what the fuck, controversial? So you're beating up somebody who's in this capacity? So however you want to envision her, she's not all packing and stuff hanging out in any of the games. So you can believe however she is or he or whatever poison would be. In, in whatever realization that you that you that you wish so it, it was it was a second thought an afterthought that they made that comment about her having the male parts and it was supposedly to, supposed to make it so it was okay to beat her up she has breasts so you're beating up somebody who has both parts which makes totally goes against the LGBTQ um, thing on top of that that makes it a hate crime so, I don't even know, you know, she came into the fight. You didn't track her down. It's not like you went to her house and yanked her out by the nape of her neck and started beating on her. She challenges you in Street Fighter. I wonder who the villain will be for the Eternals movie. I know nothing about that comic. That's why I'm really excited. I know nothing about her either. It's one of my reasons why I love the Doom Patrol show is I know nothing about the characters, and the show was written extremely well. I want to see Guardians 3. I heard it'll be on Rocket's origin. Hope Thor is in it. Uh, I think her fact Thor is in it, because isn't that how that ended in uh, Endgame? I do control. It'd be cool if you got a 1-6 Ryu Ken. I think I've seen those. Isn't they, aren't they out there? Poison's hot, but I heard that it's a dude, and yeah, I got disturbing to hear that and be in shock. 
So yeah, it was it was afterthought. She was out. The game was out. She was out there kicking ass. She she kicks your total ass. If if you remember playing the game originally, you don't walk into your battle against poison and beat her off the bat. She totally embarrasses you. She kicks your ass so bad it's not even funny. Eventually, you learn how to fight her and win. But no, she is no joke when she totally destroys you. And people complain. Oh, wow, well, they're fighting a woman. You can't believe you, you're beating her up, blah, 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 blah. And that's when they're like, ah, she's not a woman, she's a dude. That came afterwards. So, hey, believe whatever you want. I believe I don't care what she is. I don't care what bathroom she goes to. I don't care who she dates, who she's in love with, or what she's got, where she's got it at. She looks hot, and that's why I got her, period. Uh, Sarah, do you ever kitbash the Infinity War tracksuit Tony? I have the Infinity War, uh, or the in-game tracksuit Tony, if that's what you're talking about. Oh, you're talking about the gray and orange one. I didn't get one of those, and I so wanted one of those so badly. Um, the one that when Doctor Strange is, and Tony are hanging out there at the uh, Sanctum Morning, I forget what you call it, and uh, Bruce Banner shows up warning everyone that Thanos is coming, and Tony's just sitting there complaining about Captain America and whatever else and, and having his meltdown and and then, and then Thanos, or the Black Order, shows up, and he goes out there, and he, he becomes the, the Mark 50 for the first time. That tracksuit, I would love to have that. I don't have one of those, and I would love to have one of those. I would so love to have one of those. And I missed it when it came out, and I, 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 I've not been able to find one. There, there was like two of them that were out. One was dead-on perfect, and the other one was not quite dead-on perfect. And I so wanted to get that one, and I didn't get it. I missed it. And uh, I would, I really, really, really want that. You know, he's, he he does his little grabs the little strings and 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 the suit tightens up and he taps the or double taps it. I forget what it is and boom, out comes the Mark Fifty and bam, he just starts kicking the Black Order. I I love that outfit. I wish I I had that. Yeah, I definitely I've got the uh, the in game suit that he wears when he goes back in time. The uh, the, the more or less the time travel blue and silver suit. I have this. But I really want the tracksuit. Yeah. I love this. This this uh this uh the head sculpt is a little funny. The color of the hair is a little off, in my opinion. It's more goldish than what it should be. Uh, and I'm happy to have this. You did a great job with the head sculpt. And I love this suit. And it, it tells the story. The, this Avengers suit that he wears in uh, Endgame. Uh, but no, yeah, I, I don't have that tracksuit. I wish I did. Surely, uh, surely do. It's one of those grails. Slip through my fingers and, and, and it's now become a grail. Oh. Really? You got a 1-6 Chen Li, Guile, and even a 1-6 Jill Valentine. Wow. That's the one. I picked up the clothes today because I got the spare scope with the 50. Nice. Been looking for advice with it. The 50 came with a spare sculpt? Don't even remember. Uh, I wonder if they'll do a 1-6 Dark Fate Arnold. Don't care for the movie, but it'd be cool to put next to Scorpion. Dark Fate Arnold. Well, sorry, did you see there is a third-party set of Tony from Spider-Man Homecoming... Yes, yes, I was talking about that a little bit ago. I think I'm going to track that down. I think they call it the white suit or something. It looks really cool. So he's got the white outfit on. It's kind of a long coat. He's got a scarf on. And I think he's got the flowers around his uh, his uh, neck as well. And the Edith glasses. Oh, uh, yeah, it looks great. I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to snatch that up. Yep, because that's the old, uh, if you cared about me, you'd be here. Or no, he says, uh, well, I can't believe you came all this way to uh, to save me. And he's like, nope, not even here. Which turned around a bit Peter in the ass later when um, he rescues his butt again. When it, when the uh, fairy was cut right in half. And Peter's having his nuclear meltdown. And he goes, if you even cared about me, you'd be here. And he pops out of the suit. Oh, man. I didn't see that coming. 
I hope we see young Thanos in the Eternals movie. Oh, ooh. Wow, that's a thought. And he won six figures non-Marvel Star Wars Trek. Wait a minute. And he won six figures non-Marvel Star Wars Trek. You like them to make me like a Columbo. Oh, Cole Jack. Okay, I understand your question. Um, yeah, I would have to say, so I have a couple movies that are like my all-time favorites, no matter what, they'll never get tired of ever watching them, ever, okay? One of those is a movie called Silent Running, which had these little robots in it. Um, that's a great movie. If you've not seen it, it's from like the late 60s, early 70s, amazing movie, uh, Silent Running. Uh, another one is The Princess Bride. Love. The Princess Bride. Never, ever get tired of watching that. Love it. Love it. The other top movie that I never, ever get tired of watching. And this would be something I would like to see all the figures on. And they had a figure, and I don't remember if it's too late for me to get it, and I, I tossed it back and forth a lot on whether or not to get it. But my other favorite movie is... Blade Runner, and I'm talking about the 1982 or whatever it is, Blade Runner, Harrison Ford, and I forget the uh, the name of the actress that played his love interest in that. I would love those figures, and because I love that movie, I also had a great affection for Blade Runner 2049, which everyone turned on, and they made a Joy figure, and she looks great. And I, I've thought about buying Joy. And I would like to see the characters from Blade Runner. I'd love to see a 1-6 scale spinner. So my top movies are Blade Runner, The Princess Bride, and Silent Running. And if you've never seen or heard of Silent Running, track it down. It's an amazing movie. It really is. Old, old school movie. Old school special effects. Um, uh, but I think it has a really powerful story. And, and it's a great movie. Silent Running. Check it out. Hot Metal Toys went on Mark 100 Studio Spider-Man Homecoming Tony Stark outfit. Yes. That's where I've seen it at, actually, was Toys Wonderland. Huey, Dewey, and Louie. There we go. There's someone who knows about silent running. Yes, sir. I want a Chris Christopherson from Convoy. Ooh. Or Lee Majors from The Fall Guy. I wonder if he could use the $6 million man for that. It's funny that that song about the that they used for Fall Guy, he was actually dating Farah Fawcett. It's funny. I want a decent figure of uh, an outlaw, Josie Wales. Mm. Thanos is an eternal with deviant syndrome. Eternals had a settlement on Titan, but I don't know if these eternals are from that settlement or somewhere else. Hmm. It would probably behoove them to make Thanos part of that, one way or the other. You know what I mean? Um, Josh Brolin is really cashing in on Thanos, and we all love to hate Thanos. And, um, you know, I, I, I still remember that scene where Scarlet Witch um, sees Thanos at the end of Endgame, and she's, she's literally having her nuclear meltdown. And this is Thanos from the past, so it's time-traveling Thanos. And here's Scarlet Witch. She's about ready to exact a revenge on him. And she's like, you, you have killed everyone that I have loved. And Thanos just very matter-of-factly looks at her because he has no idea who she is at all. Says, I don't even know who you are. Oh, that don't make you hate Thanos. But he's speaking truth. He's truly the Mad Titan. He truly is. He truly is the Mad Titan. Greatest American hero. Oh, my God. I'm on top of the world. Uh, with Bill. A nice Buck Rogers set would be awesome. I love that series. And I'm, I think you're talking about Buck Rogers from the 70s. Uh, the television series with Aaron. I don't remember what her name was. Yeah. That would be cool. Uh, it would be so cool if we see in the Eternals movie Thanos going to the council and warning them that Titan will not survive. And them brushing him off. 
Yeah, it would be nice to see that. It would be it'd be really cool for that to be a story. I agree, one hundred percent. It'd be nice to watch the, the 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 rise and fall more or less of Thanos to have a complete story of him. We have so many so much information about him in the movies that he's been in. You know, it's it's like you know who I I, I miss that they they did, they kind of brushed off Ronan. You know, here's Ronan. He he comes to power. He's he's he, he confronts Thanos, and then uh, in uh, Infinity War comes out, or, or was it Infinity War? Comes out, and all of a sudden, Ronan's dead. What the fuck? So I, I, it makes me wonder if there's going to be more backstory movies, you know, because we have uh, what's his name, uh, Adam uh, Warlock, right? Is that his name? Um, we kind of see that in Guardians of the Galaxy two. That that's coming about. So maybe we'll see what happened to Ronan with that. Maybe there'll be a, another backstory, more or less, that comes about that wasn't there. So that'd be cool to see. I, I would like to see a, a complete history of Thanos. That'd be cool. Because what drove him insane? Was he always crazy? What made him go about with this desire to wipe out a portion of the universe? You know, what was that? What pushed him to that? How did he become that? I'd like to see a fleshed out story of Thanos. That'd be cool. Aaron Gray. Yes, Buck Rogers, 25th century. We find out Jarrell destroyed Titan. You mean Jor You mean Jarrell from Superman? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Thanos is in love with death. Um, who also Deadpool is in love with. Right? In Robot Chicken, Krypton Lawyer comes to Earth, tells Kyle, Krypton fine, and father was a nasty divorce and blew, blew him up in a rocket. Trying to impress death. Yeah, Thanos was trying to impress death. He sure was. That's a whole story there. And, and it was like this love triangle thing going on, too, with uh, Deadpool. Deadpool was in love with Death, and Thanos was in love with Death, and um, Lady Death, you know, or well, not Lady Death, just Death. I think she's just called Death. Oh, I would love to see that. Especially now that Deadpool is part of the same house that owns the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It would be so easy to cross that in. And it would be such a great story to see a Thanos, Deadpool, death um, story there. That would be amazing. That would be great. Because when you think about Deadpool, I have a feeling that the Deadpool storyline that, that we have been presented with, with uh, Ryan Reynolds, isn't today. It isn't today. I kind of get this feeling that it's kind of in the past, kind of verified by the McAvoy um, Professor X. So I'm thinking Deadpool really is not 2019. Okay? So Deadpool could have a relationship with Death or entertain her or try to have a, a love interest with her, and Thanos would still be alive. And we could see that type of a thing. I don't think I'm stretching too far for that. I really don't. I don't think I'm stretching too far for that. Thanos was born, wears the deviant syndrome. His skin was hide-like and purple. Eternals are not normally purple. When his mom sees him, she goes crazy and tries to kill him. I did not know that. If you're, if you're talking factual canon, that's news to me. That's interesting. Someone mentioned it would be fun to have Deadpool doing the cameos from now on instead of Stan Lee. Hmm. I'd have to think about that. I kind of like how that goes. I do kind of like how that goes. One thing that I thought was interesting was what someone had said, which I've put a lot of weight into this opinion was that 
Um, Steve Rogers, old Steve Rogers, should have been Stan Lee. And that would have explained the whole thing that, you know, he was checking on his friends all this time, more or less. And that was interesting, another interesting way of thinking about things, that all the Stan Lee cameos was really old man Steve Rogers as he was progressing through time. Because when you think about it, when he went back in time, and then they look over and he's sitting on a park bench, he would have been sitting on that park bench the whole time as that story had gone along. So he could have been the Stan Lee cameos all along, you know, watching his associates or friends, however you want to call it. I did not see CW Crisis event. I only saw it for Flash 90 death scene. It was kind of sad, but cool like in the comics. Deadpool would be good for cameos. I, I have to put some thought to that. I think that I think you're onto something there. I think that would be cool to see Deadpool do the cameos. That, that would be cool. I like how in the uh, it never made it to the movie, but the uh, the trailers for Deadpool 2 where uh, Stan Lee says something. He's like, zip it, Stan Lee. I thought that was funny. Uh, some of Thanos' backstory in the comics actually has a comic run uh, where you see his life from when he was younger to an adult. I'd like to see that uh, it fleshed out into the movies. Did you see that Joker movie? Just curious. I did not. I did not. Uh, you talking about Suicide Squad? Oh, no, no. You're talking about Joker with, um, uh, what's his name, the actor. Uh, he did the Johnny Cash movie, too. I can't remember his name right now. I did not. Uh, I'm sure I would enjoy it. I love the Joker. I love Batman. I understand Joker. I know Joker is a homicidal maniac. I'm not shocked or surprised by that. I guess people went into uh, uh, the Joker movie thinking he was going to be a, a lighthearted guy. Heath, Heath, uh, Heath Ledger did a great Joker. There are so many great Jokers. Jack Nicholson did a great Joker. Um, Cesar Romero did a great Joker. Joker is insane. He is not a normal person. He does not think like you and I do. And people get shocked whenever that realization comes about onto the screen. I've not seen the Joker movie. I would love to see the Joker movie. But from my understanding, there's a lot of people that had a problem with his mental illness. Joker's insane. He's crazy. He has a mental illness. There's something wrong with him. He's a homicidal maniac. He's a, he's a um, um, what's another term for, uh, I, I forget what it is, somebody who, who uh, actually has no passion or concern for uh, any uh, a life. I can't remember what that is. That's how Joker is. I understand that. Completely understand that. And um, anybody that tries to powder, powder coat or, 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 or uh, cover over Joker with flowers and daisies and perfume and make him pretty and, and pretend that he's a good guy is sorely wrong. And personally, in my opinion, the Dark Knight is called the Dark Knight, not because it's nighttime that he's out there being Batman, but because he's also dark. So the Joker and Batman go hand in hand. Both of them are a little touched. Both of them are a little out there. Both of them are just a little bit insane. So Bruce Wayne also has a mental illness, in my opinion. He really does. And I think Michael Keaton did a good job of explaining that uh, in uh, his rendition of Batman. And I think that uh, Christopher Nolan did a good job showing that Batman is just a little bit touched. There's something wrong up there. Um, so I think as long as the writers keep in mind that Joker's insane. He's a uh, he's a homicidal maniac. I can't remember the term that's slipping me right now. That would be a perfect uh, example of who Joker is. And uh, Batman is a little insane. As long as you keep that in mind, then you're going to make good Batman and, and Joker movies. That's my belief. I did not see the movie. I have heard a lot of people complain about his mental illness, but I I I I, I literally my answer is really you're surprised. You're surprised that Joker has a mental illness. Really? You're really surprised that the Joker has a mental illness. You truthfully went in there thinking he was a good guy. You truthfully went in there thinking that he wasn't going to shoot or kill or dismember anybody or whatever it is that he does. Joker ain't right. 
I think you're right with Stan being a watcher because uh, we see him up there uh, talking to them. I, I think you're right. I, I, I like that fan idea too. I do. I like that, uh, that, 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 that Stan is a watcher. Isn't Thanos a baby in the comics? Hmm. If he was a baby in, in the comics, then War Machine would have got him. <laughs> Isn't that what he talked about? Going back in time and getting him as a baby. Stanley rated that Stanley rated that woman a 10 in the beauty contest in Iron Man 3. So I'm not sure if Cap could cope behaving that way. <laughs> Language, <laughs> right? Batman gravelly voice. Bane, uh, Bane muffled voice. Batman, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I laughed the most in the movie theater when War Machine suggested that baby Hitler for baby Thanos. Yeah, I, I did too. I enjoyed that. That was awesome. I like how they were discussing how time travel works, and they're referencing all the movies that have, that have discussed time travel, and Bruce Banner's like, yeah, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. It was really, really good to see that uh, that barter in regards to that. It was really nice. It was fun. Uh, I I need to watch all the uh, the DC movies. I need to catch up. Really do. I need to go see Star Wars this week. That's my plan. So, uh, subscribe to me if you if you're not like click the subscription, um, click the notifications. Go to patreon.com, Siri Emerald. Hey, if you don't mind giving me a dollar a month, that'd be great. It helps out so much. Uh, I would appreciate that. Um, and uh, thanks very much for tuning in. I've got a lot planned, but, you know, plans. Uh, what is it? Uh, I like, uh, if you've ever seen The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, the, the movie, I like how they said, uh, uh, what's that about uh, best plans of mice and men? And the guy says, well... Of mice, at least. Uh, I like that. So, best laid plans of mice and men. I have a lot of plans. A lot of things don't come to fruition. I'm happy to put her feet on. Mary Jane here. I love that black. Um, I love my black cat. Love her. She looks great. Um, if you if you are going to complete your Spider Man collection, you gotta have you gotta have her. I don't care. I would love to have all the other Spider Man. Amazing Spider-Man, Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, Andrew Garfield Spider-Man, black suits, red suits. I would love to have those. I'll continue to buy all the Spider-Man. I can't wait for the negative suit to come out. I guess some people have already received theirs, but I'll probably get mine in March. And uh, I have a feeling Big Time Spidey's coming. We've got that other one that they uh, um, showed at uh, one of the comic cons. It was a uh, the with the um, the green behind it. What was it? The, the other Spider-Man they've showed us. We know it's coming. It's just not been put up for pre-order yet. It's been previewed to us. And I can't believe for one second the Hot Toys wouldn't continue to make that. But we got that Spider-Man coming out soon, right? Any Anyone see that Harley Quinn cartoon clips on YouTube? It's actually funny. I'm uh, not sure what it is. One bad guy called WWACT. I was shocked and laughed at the same time. It's on YouTube. It was funny and shocking at the same time. Velocity suit. Yes, we know that one's coming because uh, we've we've been previewed that. So of course, yeah, that's a no-brainer for me. I'm going to be buying that. And um, it seems to be that they're following the history of the Cos Babies, and they've released a big time Spider-Man in the Cos Babies. So I have a feeling um, big time Spider-Man will be coming out. And they did a, a um a, the ghost with the the head. Oh my God, what is that? Spirit Spider-Man or something? Oh my God. So I would love to see all, whatever it is, 41 suits or whatever that they did in um, the PlayStation 4 video game. I, I, I really need to get a hold of the Andrew Garfield and the Tobey Maguire Spider-Mans. And uh, I, I will be very pleased with that. And, and uh, of course, I'm totally still on, on to Deadpool. I would love to get a, a hold of a, a, another, I think it was a Deadpool 2, with the, uh, so I can duct tape them up. I have, I have my Deadpool 2, but I, don't, I didn't put the duct tape on them. But I would love to have another Deadpool 2 just so I could duct tape him up. Because I, I love him in all of his duct tape. It's so damn funny. You know, he's got bullet holes in him and he duct tapes himself up. That's so damn funny. 
Um, Lots of food. Called Wonder Woman. A, oh my God. What? <laughs> Harley Quinn and Wonder Woman they got into a fight. Did you see the Spider Man Hall of Armor? Yes, I did. Showing suits from the game that they haven't shown prototypes of in 1 6 scale. I did. And so that's um, hope as well that they'll give us the 1 6 and they're not just going to have that little bitty. Because. Uh, I'm not about that miniature set myself, personally. I'm not. I'm not about it. It looks great. They also have the miniature uh, Hall of Armor Iron Man's as well. Uh, but, you know, I'm not I'm not into that because I'm a 1-6 scale. So I'm on all my 1-6 scale Spider-Man's. So it's encouraging to see that. And I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope that we keep buying these Spider-Man, which is going to encourage Hot Toys to continue making them. I'd also like to see them um, finish up the rest of the Hall of Armor. I like to see them re-release the 20s and the 21s, and the and uh, they don't have to do the 22 again, um, but uh, the 15 and the, and and the 17 and and all of these that they made before, and I'd like to see them complete the ones like the 37, which never came out, and the 16, which never came out, and these suits that we've never seen. I really want to see a, a complete Hall of Armor. I'd buy them all. I would. I truthfully would. I really, really, really would. <laughs> you can see Deadpool copying the Hall of Armor. Guys, I got to run. Yeah, I guess I probably should too. Thanks for the good times. Check me out on Patreon. Send me a dollar. I'd appreciate it. Uh, I will. I'll tell my wife you guys asked about her. She's so happy to hear that. Um, she says she's on the mend. And uh, I want nothing more than to have my wife back. The way things were. Um. I don't think she'll ever get back to where she was. I don't think she's going to make it back to the status quo, but I'd like to at least be able to see her into a healthy enough condition that um, um, that my life came back to a normal track. So thank you for asking, Honor. I will tell her that you asked. It, it pleases her. She loves hearing that you guys care for her. And I, I thank you guys for caring for her too. <laughs> I love you guys. Thanks very much for joining me. I uh, will see you next week, and uh, maybe I can get motivated to do some of these other things that I really keep saying that I'm going to do with this channel. I really want to do a uh, a full on tour of every single suit, every single piece that I own, and just uh, one at a time. Then bang, 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 bang. So stay tuned. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. I love every one of you guys. Thank you very much. Have a good one. See you on the next video. Happy collecting. Stop the video. We can't stop the video.